Welcome to ESPN's College Football Saturday Night, celebrating 20 years of college football on ESPN. Tonight, the South Carolina Gamecocks take on the number eight Tennessee Volunteers. All season, ESPN Saturday Night College Football will be broadcast in high definition, presented by Phillips and Best Buy. Hi, everybody. Ron Franklin along with Mike Gottfried, and welcome to Knoxville, Tennessee. All week long, Lou Holtz has said one thing, pure and simple. If we can't run the football, we can't beat Tennessee on Saturday night. Tennessee is ranked number six in the nation on defense. How do they accomplish the task, my God? Well, I agree with Lou Holtz. you got to be able to run the football against this defense. They're all, Tennessee's defense only given up 53 yards rushing, but they play three passing teams, Fresno, Marshall, and Florida. They'll get a bigger test tonight against the run with Demetrius Summers, the tailback, and Dondrell Pinkins, the quarterback, who's like having an extra running back in the backfield. Boy, that's for sure, Mike, and we'll keep an eye on him. Fifth season as the head coach at South Carolina. You see Lou's career numbers almost 67 percent in the victory total and on the far side of the field in his 12th season as the head coach at Tennessee Phil Fulmer won a national championship in 1998 winning over Florida State out in the Fiesta Bowl weather could be a problem it's rained very hard and has stormed all day long it was sprinkling just a while ago and it is something that we're going to have to check with Adrian on from time to time as you look at the series history. The last three games have been very, very close. South Carolina in recent years has been given Tennessee all they could handle. Tennessee won the toss. They have deferred to the second half. Will Hoyt will kick it off. Newton and Matthew Thomas, the two deep men for South Carolina. Up there standing, they're cheering. Almost 107,000 strong, and we're underway. South Carolina at Tennessee. It'll not be returned from the end zone by Matthew Thomas. So let's take a look at the starters tonight. And here is the gentleman that Mike will talk about all evening long. He's a very large human being for a quarterback. Dondrell Pinkin, 6'2", 245 pounds. And we have seen him as a starter. We have seen him play in the past. We saw him play in past seasons. But this year, he's the guy. Tell us about him. Adequate thrower, a uh, good running quarterback in the backfield. Likes the play action game. Demetrius Summers is the tailback. And they hand it off on the reverse. 20, 25 yard line that is Chavez Donnings and he is going to be bumped out of bounds after a gain of 12 yards and here are the other starters offensively for South Carolina. Summers the tailback, Dacus Turman the fullback, Turner the tight end, Taki Mohammed and Troy Williamson are the wide receivers. And up front with the offensive line, the best of the group, Travell Wharton at left tackle. Jabari Levy at left guard has been injured. He is back, able to play tonight. And he's a huge one, 6'7", 340 pounds, only a sophomore. They pitch, come back into the boundary, and it's Summers, nothing. Hit by the front of that defensive line, and the starters there defensively for the Volunteers as the gang tackle is made. Haroldson, Mapu gets the start tonight. Dickerson at the other tackle and Constantine Ritzman who is back from a year's injury with a knee Simon and Burnett on the outside simply magnificent very quick Robert Peace the old veteran in the middle Greer and Stewart on the outside and the two safeties may be the best combo in the country Rashad Baker and Jabril Wilson second down Carolina they need to take it out to the 42-yard line as this crowd trying to help out the Tennessee defense on this opening sequence. Play action. Here comes the pressure. Gets the pass. It is tipped and incomplete as he did not have possession as he went out of bounds at the 37-yard line. And this is what Don Drill Pinkins does best, but Kevin Burnett did not take the fake. He's going to pressure Don Drill Pinkins and force him to throw a high ball. Still should have been caught. Kevin Burnett, a great linebacker they're happy to have back here at Tennessee, has been hurt his entire career. He and Simon present some real problems for the quarterback because both of them run so extremely well. Third down. Dacus Terman, the lone setback, and they roll the pocket to the open side of the field. Here comes the pressure, and he simply throws this one away. 
Goodman was the intended receiver, but the ball was thrown at his feet. And you have to say that is a very good opening sequence for Tennessee. A good job by the defense of Tennessee, and I think the advantage in the kicking game is definitely Tennessee's. First punt of the night, Josh Brown. Redshirt sophomore out of Clarksburg, Maryland. Rashad Baker is the deep man for the Volunteers. He takes the step to the side. Kick is blocked by Tennessee. And it's recovered at the 10-yard line. It'll be first down and goal for the Volunteers as Mitchell got the block. Number 40. And a very excited Coach Fulmer on the far sideline. Tennessee felt like their kicking game was better. This is a Canadian uh, league formation right here, and he just, they got too much penetration. Marvin Mitchell was unblocked. Big splits, and then the three running backs back there are supposed to block for the punter. Mitchell got through. Well, the unusual style, and you're seeing more punters use that, taking a couple of steps to the side and then kicking the ball to get overspin on it rather than a spiral. Handoff straight ahead. It'll go for just a couple of yards as Cedric Houston is the ball carrier. Casey Clawson, the quarterback, now a senior, showing tremendous leadership, and uh, the coaches are extremely impressed with the way he has gotten off of the right foot this year. Yeah, Ron, last year he didn't have any playmakers. Kelly Washington got hurt. The running back Cedric Houston got hurt. Now he has playmakers. Well, we'll talk more as the night goes on about this outstanding group of young wide receivers that Tennessee has and now Clawson with possibly an audible he does a good job at the line of scrimmage checking out a bad place second down and eight here's the pass fade for the end zone it is after a touchdown Payton C.J. Payton the sophomore out of Virginia Beach Virginia beat Ted Crawford and it's six to nothing volunteers not the way you'll want to come in here if you're South Carolina. Get this crowd in the football game, but Casey Cross, and that won't show up tomorrow, but this check off, and he did a good job, one-on-one, -on -one, through the fade touchdown. James Will Hoyt to attempt the extra point. Gets a good one, and the kick is right down the middle. So we'll take a timeout. In one minute and 55 seconds, a blocked kick, and now this touchdown pass. Balls lead it, 7 to nothing. Now, Marvin Mitchell is going to be not blocked here. Number 40, he's just going to roar in here. Now, the up back, far left up back, has got to be able to block him because you don't let a defender come free like that to block the punt. That's the first time I've ever seen a punt where nobody blocked a guy. You know, Mike, it, it is as simple as if you just get a little piece of it, that's all you need because yeah. that's the split second. Difference. I think it's the up back's job, though, because they have such big right. splits. They, they're forcing everything to the up backs. Will Hoyt with the kick. This one, a knuckleball taken at the four by Matthews. 15, 20. Almost had the ball stripped away from him. Runs right into the arm of a Tennessee volunteer special team. And it's Marvin Mitchell. He's off to a great start in the special teams. 23 is, yards Ron. on a return. Excuse me. Ron, this is a series right here. You know, you have points in a ball game. South Carolina's got to answer Tennessee's score because you don't want this crowd to get with this defense, this defense to get pumped up because they could run you out of here. Again, Dacus Terman, the lone setback. He is a fullback, but also can run tailback. Has a 5.9 average per try. And he's not going to have that on this attempt right here. And it gives us an opportunity to go back to the studio. Reese Davis, what do you have for us, young man? Ron, Taco Bell is going to take us down to Bryant Denny. The waning seconds. Hogs down by seven to Alabama. Matt Jones getting pressure. Richard Smith gets the foot down and... Well, it's Arkansas, you know we're going to overtime. Have you guys ever seen the Hogs play overtime? 31 all. Yeah, I think we saw six overtimes here last year with the Hogs. 
started at 7.45 and ended after midnight, Reese. <laughs> Second down at about nine. From the shotgun, Pinkins drills the ball. It is tipped. Whoa, dangerous situation. If that ball is intercepted after it was tipped, Jabril Wilson is a man who got his hands on it. Very nice play with a strong safety. That's going to be another six point for the Volunteers. Yeah, Jabril Wilson sitting right in that throwing lane right there, and he got his hands on it. But Dondrell Pinkins uh, had too much mustard on that throw. But this Tennessee defense, when you look at them, they fly around. They got speed on defense. Pickens, 0 of 3. Need some magic right here, or they're going to have to give the ball right back to the Volunteers. Third down, they need the 38. Short drop, right over the middle. Has it complete. Good for the first down, plus five more. Troy Williamson, who is nursing a thigh injury. Extremely fast, but he's been slowed with the injury. He's the man who made the reception. Yeah, Troy Williamson makes his 14th catch against Jabari Greer. And John Chavis, the defensive coordinator for Tennessee, says he has track speed, so they don't want him to get away. Nope, they don't. You could see there, even with a thigh injury, he moves extremely well. So the new line of scrimmage out at the 43, and Pinkins with an audible. Plenty of time in the plate there. At seven, now at six. And hands it off to Summers. Summers, left side, has five. Counted out at nine yards in the carry. A coming out party, for the most part, for this youngster last week. Mike, tell us about him. When they recruited him, Lou Holtz told him, he said, when he's in his living room, he said, I'm fight, you come to South Carolina, I'll start you on the first play. He ran the first play at South Carolina's first ball game for 10 yards, and of course, he came out. And then Terman came into the ball game, but now all of a sudden, now Summers is hot as a tailback for South Carolina. Well, you see his average over seven yards per try. Gets it again. Goes to the left side. He's loose at the 40, at the 35, and he'll take it down to the 33-yard line. Tackled finally by Rashad Baker as those safeties are getting a workout on this drive, and it's a gain of 15. I go back to what I said earlier. This is a big series because you have to answer Tennessee's score. Demetrius Summers shows good speed getting the outside. When we watched him on tape the other day, the one thing I noticed about him, he cuts real well. Just couldn't tell his speed. Tell you one thing, Mike. The two guys he's running behind, Travell Workman, 315 pounds. Levy right next to him at guard at 340. Those are pretty good avenue makers. This time it's Terman. Breaks off a tackle. Breaks off another. He's loose in the middle. At the 20. Cuts it back inside the 15-yard line. It will be first and 10. And that is a gain of 19. Kevin Burnett finally made the stop. Where are the holes and why, Mike? Well, we talked about Tennessee's rush defense. They played three passing teams. Now, all those teams, Marshall, Fresno, and Florida, run the ball, but they mainly throw the football. And South Carolina's going to try to run right at the front of Tennessee. That's the suspect question of this Tennessee defense, the down lineman. Dacus Terman, the lone setback. Two tight ends, South Carolina. Two wide receivers out to the right. And Terman right up the middle. And this time he'll go for two, maybe three yards. You're going to spot him down at the 10. Carlton Neal, who did not start tonight, the left defensive end, makes the tackle for the ball. You have rush defense of Tennessee right now ranked sixth in the country. Only allowed one touchdown on the ground, 53.3 yards, but they're getting a test tonight with South Carolina. John Chavis, one of the best coaches in college football. Eighth play of the drive as they scrimmage from just outside the 10. Play clock down to two, down to one. He got it off. Option to the open side of the field. And Tennessee is right there to stop that one for no gain. In fact, I think he lost about a half yard. Robert Peace, we talked about him as the veteran in the middle linebacking spot, is the guy who came over to mess it up. Yeah, Paris Harrison does a good job, first of all, uh, on the option play as he forces up the double team. Peace also in the play. Well, Lou Holtz does not want a field goal here. He obviously does want points, as Mike has pointed out, but he wants seven points. 
They're confused coming out of the huddle. Better hurry. Timeout. Play clock is down to four, down to three, and they will call a timeout so that they don't get a delay penalty. South Carolina. So let's take a timeout. 8.41 remaining, opening quarter. Tennessee 7, South Carolina threatening. So welcome back. It is third down. They need the four-yard line. South Carolina on this drive. Seven attempts, 48 yards. Extremely impressive. Almost seven yards per try. Dacus Terman, the lone setback. Offset to the right. Tennessee showing blitz off the edge. Here he comes. And the pass over the middle. It is knocked away. And here comes a flag. Pass interference, Tennessee. I think it's a good call, Ron. Uh, Prince Pollard, the back judge, is going to make this call. But... I believe the hand uh, was on the receiver. Taki Muhammad was the intended receiver, and it was Rashad Baker who had the hand in the back, as Mike said. And let's see the discussion. There are actually two flags thrown on the play. Doyle Jackson, our referee, and he indicates it is against the Volunteers, so it'll be a first down, and the penalty will take this inside the five-yard line. Rashad Baker in the secondary can't see it from there on Muhammad His left hand is where uh, the call is made on so a power I set to the right here's where you ask your defensive lineman just to get penetration down here Demetrius Summers is the tailback they give it to him, tries to bounce it outside, knocked down at the one-yard line. He will not get in. Although South Carolina signaling touchdown, it will not be. Jabari Greer was the man who came up to put the stick on him. Okay. Lou Holtz pacing. He gave up a blocked kick. And in two plays, Tennessee scored. But as we mentioned, until the pass interference a moment ago, on seven rushing plays, they averaged right at seven yards per carry. This is the 10th play of the drive coming up. So a timeout has been called and will stay right here. And Mike Idle, South Carolina had to call the timeout, didn't they? The play yes. clock was down to three. I think the plays are getting in late. Now, they've used two timeouts, but uh, when you look at South Carolina, they needed to answer the touchdown to Tennessee. Yeah. They're right here knocking on the door. Skip Holtz, of course, standing uh, right there in the middle of the picture, the offensive coordinator for uh, for Lou Holtz, his, uh, his dad. Ron, the, the, oh, excuse me, the road to, for the East Championship runs right through Tennessee, Florida, Gainesville, Florida, and Georgia in the last 11 years. And Lou Holtz is 2-11 and 11 versus Georgia, Tennessee, and Florida in five seasons. So if you're going to win the championship in the East of South Carolina, you've got to be able to beat Tennessee and, and Georgia and Florida. Last night when their team plane flew in, one of the local television stations walked up to him and said, Coach, why have you had such a difficult time playing in Neyland Stadium? And he said, I love the city, but it seems like every time I come here, I have to play Tennessee. Uh, time is back in. Ball resting just inches away from the goal line. You think about Pinkins here. He's a big quarterback with a quarterback sneak or give it to Terman. Turns, hands it off. Terman bangs his way at the left side. Touchdown, South Carolina. Tennessee thought they had stopped him, but he broke the plane. And the Gamecocks, within an extra point of tying this one up. A big drive by the offensive line of South Carolina. When they ran right at Tennessee, they had success. When they tried to run the option with the speed of Tennessee, they didn't have as much success, but they're going to run right at them all night. Ten plays, 72 yards, using up just over five minutes. And it'll be Daniel Weaver, the senior out of North Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, to attempt the extra point. Attempt is up and through, and you see the reaction by Lou Holtz. 
Watch this reaction when they scored the touchdown as Terman bangs his way at left tackle and with the extra effort scores the touchdown. Lou says we're tied. Show a good look at the Terman who was scored from about a half yard out. And this ball game is tied. Joey Bowers prepares to kick it off for South Carolina. He was the holder a moment ago. And watching Tennessee in practice, they feel like they can return a kickoff against South Carolina. On Thursday, also, yeah. on Thursday afternoon, Mike, at the uh, workout then, we saw them work long and hard on special teams as Larkins is the man who was back deep. And Corey with uh, tremendous speed awaits this kickoff. Tied at seven. And DeBrin going to come down at the goal line. It's Larkin. 10, 15, right up the middle. 20, gets to the outside. 30, and cannot get by the next to the last tackler. A 33-yard return, and it's uh, DeAndre Island on the stop. When you play goal line defense, you want penetration by the defensive lineman. Then the linebacker's got to step up and make the play. And you get them real high, and you get... The, Submarining underneath the offensive lineman. Holtz is happy. Tennessee with good field position here. Kickoff yep. return. 33 yards on that kick return. That is uh, the season long for Larkins, by the way, Mike. Clausen with an audible. He'll go straight ahead. Short yardage, maybe for a couple at the 35-yard line uh, if Cedric Houston is uh, stopped. And let's we never have to complete the offensive lineup because they scored so quickly. Houston and Fleming in the backfield. McClure, the tight end. Tony Brown and Mark Jones, the two starters at wide receiver. We will see a bevy of wideouts. Munoz, Respert gets the start tonight. Wells, Douglas, and Sean Young making out that offensive line. Veteran group and very good, particularly with run blocking. Offset eye. This time, Clawson retreats to throw and quick out of the backfield. Has that one complete to Troy Fleming. And Troy is going to take it out across the 45 to the 47. St. Pro makes the tackle. Good for 12 yards. Here are the starters on defense for the Gamecocks. Thompson, Shropshire, St. Pro, who just made the stop, and George Gals. The linebackers, well, it really starts in the middle with Marcus Lawrence, a junior college transfer. He was a junior college All-American at Butler. And in the secondary, the best of the group, Dante Robinson, a preseason All-SEC pick. And on some All-American teams in the preseason. First and ten, very good field position now with the 46 and a half. Lawson steps up, got a man to open, right over the middle, and he's got it inside the 30. Down to the 23-yard line. Tony Brown, the junior out of Lauderdale Lakes, scored a good for 31 yards on that strike. And Tony Brown was a receiver that uh, Randy Sanders said was hurt this week. Hoped he would give him 12 plays with a groin injury. Wide open over in the post. And Casey Clawson hit him against Goss in the secondary. That's interesting because Randy was really concerned, saying he's iffy. He injured that against Fresno, which is quite a while ago, and he just can't seem to get it well. Clawson now 3 of 3, 51 yards. Houston bounces it outside at the 20, puts a head down running hard down to around the 17-yard line. And Reese Davis, let's go back and check with you. Arkansas and Alabama in overtime. This for the tie to win it. Brian Bostick. Eventually, they'll snap it. Tommy Leather just a bit outside. And we will play on second overtime. Coyle throwing an interception. Arkansas trying to win it. We'll keep you up to date. Okay, Reese, I started to say, how many times have you seen a team with an opportunity like that to win it, and then they lose it in the very next overtime? Second down and short. Play action as they roll the pocket. Clawson drills it and knocked away at the last minute. Got there a little bit late on that pass as Dante Robinson, and we talked about his skills back there, and he knocks the pass away. Ron Casey Clawson has thrown 54 career touchdown passes here. I don't think that the, the uh, fans and the media have given him the uh, accolades he deserves because last year we talked about last year when Kelly Washington went down, not a lot around him. But this year he has played very well in the Florida game, made some key pass 
pass completions to keep drives alive. Troy Fleming, the lone setback. South Carolina comes up to bump on the outside. Boston begging for the ball now. One second on the clock, caught at the five. It'll be a first and goal, and that is Mark Jones, the senior out of Wallingford, Pennsylvania, good for 14 yards. We won't see Mark on both offense and defense. He is an outstanding talent. A good throw again by Keisha Kloss and a high snap. He got the ball in and threw it right on the money to Mark Jones. Robinson making the tackle. Against man coverage. Robinson kind of stumbled and wasn't able to play and knocked the ball away. Cedric Houston, the man at the top of the eyes. They go first and goal. He takes it right at the middle, at the two, at the one. Touchdown, Tennessee. Scott Wells and Jason Respert with some outstanding blocking in the middle of that offensive front. James Wilhoff to attempt the extra point. Will Hoyt with a 51-yarder last week against Florida knocks home the extra point. And Tennessee on offense tonight has been virtually unstoppable. Four minutes, 40 seconds left in his opening quarter. And here you see the run. Power right here at the end is the offensive line. It's Respert trying to clear the way along with Scott Wells. 14 to 7 volunteers. We'll be right back. Houston on the sideline after scoring the touchdown. So two drives, one following a blocked punt. Only took two plays. That covered 10 yards. And this uh, drive right here, 67 yards and seven plays, just over three minutes. Clawson three of four on that drive. Clutch throws by Casey Clawson. Matthew Thomas, along with Newton, the two deep men. Will Hoyt's kick is returnable. This one from the six, and it's Thomas. Is great coverage at the 11-yard line. Adrian Karsten, let's check with you down on the sideline. After Demetrius Summers had such a great first offensive series for the Gamecocks, it was very important to the offensive line for Tennessee to make sure that their man, Cedric Houston, could respond, and now they're very happy that he did. Hip pointer last, uh, last week, Ron, he also had some bruised ribs, so there was concern about him coming into this game, but the offensive line told him in the locker room pregame, we wanted so hard for them to tackle you from the fourth quarter. Our job to make you, make sure you have a good job tonight. The head coach had an interesting thing to say about uh, that hip injury. He said every yard more that Jabari got last week, speaking of Jabari Davis, that hip got better. Short yardage this time by Demetrius Summers, and he's going to be stopped by Robert Peace, the middle linebacker, along with Mapu. JT Mapu, a sophomore out of Hawaii. And Mapu now starting at defensive tackle is giving him a little bit more push up inside. 6'3, 265. Plays hard. Second down. At about nine yards for the first. 14 to 7. Tennessee leads. Nice uh, play right there as he faked the pitch. Threw it back over the middle at the 20 yard line. It's complete. Reese Davis. Let's check back with you. Double overtime. Arkansas and Alabama. Chris Balsero, who is not the starting kicker on the day, came in and he is the hero. The Roadhogs go into Tuscaloosa and they win it 34 31. So Alabama let one get away there as they had it won in overtime with a field goal attempt, and it was just wide left, and then they turn it over, and Arkansas comes up with the winning field goal in overtime at Tuscaloosa. Summers breaks out of a tackle, 25-30, out to the 34-yard line where Shad Baker pushed him out of bounds. Ron Franklin, along with Mike Godfrey, and Adrian Karsten, and good to have you along with us. It's a 13-yard gain on that play here at Neyland Stadium. Southeastern Conference affair between South Carolina and Tennessee of the Eastern Division. You talk to Don Drell Pickens, Pinkins about Summers, the tailback, and he said, I, I like to watch him run so much, I don't care how my fakes 
I look back, I cheat on myself a little bit, look back to watch and see how he's going to cut and run. He's an impressive freshman. Yeah, he 6'1", 200 pounds. Hey, Mike, how about these numbers? In high school, he scored 127 touchdowns and had over 9,000 yards rushing, 9,076. A three against UAB last week. Bakus Terman is the lone setback this time. Here comes the blitz off the corner, but they run away from it. And the quarterback, Pinkins, going to be hit by Constantine Richmond and ridden down after a gain of maybe a couple on the play. Richmond, with extreme speed, got outside to make the hit. And Constantine Richmond's coming off a knee injury. They feel like he's about 90% right now. Constantine, born and raised in Italy, grew up playing soccer, played basketball, ran, ran track. And we'll tell you more about how he got to the United States to play American football. Second down and long. They roll the pocket to the right. Here comes Richmond from behind. Delivers the pass complete to Williamson. And Williamson will be stopped at the 38-yard line. That will bring you up to date with everything that has happened so far. Mitchell blocks a punt on the very opening series. And on the second play, the fade route is complete to uh, Faden. And then the running game. They averaged the seven yards a try as they got it into the end zone. But in just a moment ago, Tennessee comes back to answer with Cedric Houston. And that's how we stand at 14 to 7. Dinkins. Flagged by the referee. Well, he, uh... This crowd is so large and it can get so noisy in this stadium. There was a movement before the snap, so a five-yard assessment coming up against South Carolina. And Doyle Jackson was trying to get the play stopped and finally did. Talking to Skip Holtz, he talked about against Tennessee. They have not scored over 14 That's points right. in the last five years. So the challenge is to the offense to, to put some points on the board. Now, the first drive was a pretty good drive. That is the uh, the first penalty against South Carolina. Just under two minutes to play in this opening quarter. Dacus Terman, again the lone setback. They flare him to the left. Pass over the middle on. He's got a man open. Throws it complete to Matthew Thomas inside the 40, and he's down to the 37-yard line. And you see some really good speed by the South Carolina wideouts. And you see some good catching ability. That's his seventh catch for 30 yards. And we talked, uh, Lou Holtz and Skip Holtz talked about the drop passes in the first three games. They had 21 drop passes, but, but the receivers looked like they're grabbing the football tonight with yeah. excellent hands. Well, guess who's uh, playing defense right now? Wide receiver Mark Jones, number 10. He made the tackle. Last week, he had a big interception against the Florida Gators. This time, Summers, the lone setback. They give it to him. Left side, 35, is at the 30. Has a game of 10, and he's still on his feet. At the 10, at the 5, and he will take it down to the one-yard line. First and goal, South Carolina. It's a 36-yard run. Ron Taki Mohammed really made a great block on a linebacker for Tennessee that allowed Summers to break loose. Well, you see how you see he just gave a dead leg to the defensive back, Mike, and got right by him. Both wide receivers, you're going to watch Muhammad, both these wide receivers blocking right there. Breaks this play open for Demetrius Summers. Terman, right side, hit in the backfield, and he's not going to get in. In fact, he may have lost a yard. But they're going to mark it down at around a one, so he lost about a half yard. Kevin Simon, one of the first men to come up and make contact. Simon had 16 tackles last week in that Florida game. Jabril Wilson is hurt. Jabril Wilson is the man who saved that touchdown on the long run by Summers just a moment ago. Ron, we talked about Tennessee rushing defense, only giving up 53 yards coming into this game. Tonight, South Carolina has 112 rushing. We talked about the pass teams. 
the passing teams, Fresno, and Florida, and Marshall, but South Carolina's coming in here tonight saying, we're gonna run right at you. Well, Coach Holtz said yesterday he had a good feeling about this ball game. Philip Fulmer, the head coach of Tennessee, said, this is a dangerous team for us to be playing, particularly right now. You can't be satisfied with the Florida win because South Carolina is plenty good enough to beat you in your own backyard. Terman, the tailback. He gets it. Right side. Tries to fight his way in, and he's not going to be able to score. It's going to be third down South Carolina. Robert Peace is at the bottom of that stack. Here again, when you get down inside the five-yard line, the defensive linemen are going to resort to getting up in inside the offensive lineman get penetration and force the tackles by the backers and the secondary so the ball still about one yard away Lou paces first quarter is over first quarter is over and we'll get a time to take a breath and to think about it at the end of the first 15 Tennessee leads it 14 to 7 and again the game cocks are threatening Back in a moment. Welcome back. Start of the second quarter. 14 to 7, Tennessee. Tenth play of the drive by South Carolina. This all started back at their own 11 yard line. Rob Turpin is the back that they like to go to down here. He's a hard running tailback. 230 pounds, about 30 more than Summers. So when the goal line set, he gets it and he bangs his way up tackle. He will not have it. Being pushed back for the right side of a defensive front. Peace, one of the first men to get there and make contact with him. And then a lot of his friends came to help very quickly. It's going to be fourth down. Yeah, the down linemen did was exactly what they have to do. Get up underneath the offensive linemen on that play and let their linebackers play. This might be an option here, right here. Pinkins getting outside. Coming to their feet. Fourth down. Goal to go. The ball just outside the one yard line. Play action. Bootleg wide open in the end zone. Touchdown. Hart Turner, the tight end. I tell you, Burnett, I think, shocked Pinkins just a little bit because he was on him in an instant, Mike. Tells you about Pinkins, though, quick reactions because he was able to get that ball away. A good call by Skip Holtz, not taking the field goal. They know they're on the road. They got a match touchdown for touchdown. Daniel Weaver to attempt the extra point. Joey Bowers, the holder, and the kick is up, and it is good. Take one more look at the touchdown. Yeah, Kevin Burnett, the linebacker, outstanding linebacker, is going to come off the corner right here and su surprise Pinkins. And all of a sudden, now you're going to get the fake. The tight end blocks down. Nobody picked the tight end up. Somebody has him man for man. And nobody picked him up. He blocks down, and all of a sudden he releases. And Pinkins does a great job to get the ball to Hart Turner. And you see the reaction by the South Carolina bench as they put number point number 14 on the board to tie this one up. Hart Turner, by the way, is one of the co-captains of the South Carolina team. He has always been excellent at catching the football, but for some reason has not been quite as consistent this year. But what a huge grab right there to put his team back even in this ball game. Ron, two points. The first play of this game, Lou Holtz, Skip Holtz ran a reverse. And then on that play, instead of taking the field goal, they go for the touchdown. They're sending a message to their football team that we're not coming over here to play close. We're coming over here to win this football game. And I think their players are playing loose. Boy, I agree with you. They are certainly playing loose and with confidence. That, by the way, Hart Turner's second career touchdown catch. Dempster, a senior out of Spartanburg, South Carolina. Here comes the kickoff. Larkins, a yard deep. He'll return it. Cuts back to the left at the 15 and now reverses again. He is being hemmed up and is going to fight his way out to the 24-yard line. Tonight's game track is being brought to you by Bridgestone. 
Boy, we had a lot going on in the first quarter. First series, fourth play, block kick, Mitchell. Two plays later, Clawson right here to throw the touchdown pass to C.J. Fahey. And South Carolina comes right back. And in fact, on this series, gained almost as many yards as Tennessee was giving up per game coming into this one. Jabari Davis checks into the lineup at tailback. They go play action to him, and Clawson now steps up. And he's going to run and slides down. Boy, I'll tell you, he took a pretty good shot to the head right there as he's sliding down at the 27. St. Pro, one of the first men to get there. There's his dad, uh, Jim. I know they have a, of course, Rick, who is younger, transferred from LSU, is uh, on the scout team here at Tennessee. And there is a younger son who was a freshman in high school who everybody says is going to be the best quarterback of them all. And they took a red eye because he played a game on Thursday night out in California. Short drop this time, gets it out on the flat to Fakey. C.J. Fakey breaks it open for a moment. It goes out across the 40 to the 41 before Marcus Lawrence stops him after a 14-yard gain. There's a look at Rick right there. Rick rooms uh, with his uh, older brother, Casey. Says that Casey's very sloppy and I'm very neat. Yeah. How about the dad? Oh, is he living a dream? Yeah. You know, come to watch your son play, your other son's on the sideline, your other son's playing freshman high school football. That man is blessed. From the 42-yard line, it's first down, and Clausen, as the blitz comes, looking, looking, throws to the safety valve, and that's Houston. Jabari Davis, I beg your pardon, and he's going to be hit down for a loss at the 40-yard line. Adrian Karsten, let's check back with you. A significant final note on that touchdown pass by the Gamecocks. Gabriel Wilson, who went down at the other end of the field with that bad ankle, re-injured from last weekend's Florida game, was not in the game. Jabril Wilson, the uh, starting strong safety, and the Gamecocks went right after his position. Well, that's, that's good observation on their part, and all is fair in, in this game, right, Mike Godfrey? You've had situations like that before. You always know when a guy's injured, you're going to test the other guy. Second down and about 12. They try to throw that uh, slip screen out to the left side, and Mark Jones goes for very short yardage. Mike, talk about the difficult situation that a Mark Jones has. He's been playing defense. They bring him over to offense because they needed somebody on the outside to give him a home run. How much do you lose as far as being a defensive back or as a wide receiver splitting time? Well, the one thing you talk about and the coaches talk about, you can't work on fundamentals. you got to work on scheme. you got to learn the plays on defense and offense. So you got to spend most of your time learning your schemes rather than the fundamentals of playing. Well, he's got two catches for 16 yards. Play clock is down to two, down to one. You can see him clapping his hands so Scott Wells would deliver the snap. Throws this one, just throws it away. And Mark Jones was the closest man to it. Some of the South Carolina people wanted grounding, but that will not be the call as Ted Crawford had the cover. And for the first time tonight, South Carolina came up with a key defensively to stop the Volunteers. A very good job by the defense getting the ball back for Dondrell Pinkins to go back to work, but it's good stop at Casey Crossan. Dustin Colquitt, he's a left footer and he can really boom it. Kicking away, Summers is the deep man. Great coverage kick. High spiral, turns over, and he fumbled the ball, mucked it out of bounds at the nine and a half yard line. So we'll take a timeout, 49 yards in the kick. We're tied at 14 in Knoxville. Right back. So we're tied at 14 in tonight's Aflac trivia question. What coach has the most wins at his alma mater in major college history? We'll have that answer a little bit later on. Time of possession, almost 12 minutes for South Carolina, 6.53 for Tennessee. Pinkins rolls the pocket to the left. Now going to go long, a little stop and go up the near sideline. And the ball uncatchable. And the receiver actually had been pushed out of bounds. Donnings was the intended receiver. Jabari Greer got him on his hip and rolled him out of bounds. And that's what you teach the defensive back to do to Donnings. Jabari Greer just really challenged well. They did a great job. A look on the far sideline at uh, 
Mark Jones, who is uh, obviously not in the ball game right now at wide receiver. Davis Terman again is the tailback. Second down, South Carolina. And they're going to run the shovel pass. Got it complete out to the 13-yard line, and that's it. Jabril Wilson, who obviously is back on the line, up is there to make the tackle on Terman. Dondrell Pinkins, the quarterback in the pregame, we filmed a little bit of him. He never grabs the laces of the football. He throws grabbing the football, doesn't use the laces. Skip Holtz tried to change him, but he's just can't change him. But he, he throws the ball well. Up. Yeah, messed him up. And <laughs> Dondrell Pinkins, I asked him, I said, did anybody, your high school coach try to change him? But I'm sure he was a good high school quarterback. He won't change those guys. He's 6 of 10 for 62 yards and a touchdown. Third down and six, and now South Carolina has time called. Out. South Carolina, their third. That's their third timeout in the first half. So rather than get the delay penalty, South Carolina will stop the clock with 10 minutes and 21 seconds left until intermission time. So with the break, it gives us an opportunity to answer to tonight's Athlete -like Trivia question. What coach has the most wins at his alma mater in major college history? Well, of course, it is Paul Bear Bryant. 232 wins at Alabama. You know, Mike, while we also have the timeout, uh, I was talking a while ago about Constantine Ritzman, the, uh, the defensive end for the... Tennessee Volunteers in just a moment ago he was uh, actually not on the field of play he was getting a breather over on the sideline he came to the states with really an unusual situation it was an NFL program that they brought together for kids who are from Europe and four of them per year that would be brought to the to this country to play American football well the NCAA made them dissolve the program after a couple of years because they did not like the fact that it was a professional group who was providing this for the youngsters but he went to Northern Florida Christian after having played really just organized football in Germany wound up coming up to Tennessee Reggie White was his favorite he had no idea Reggie White was a former volunteer anyway 10 8 in the 100 meters 21 8 in the 200 meters has outstanding speed plays hard on every play Pinkins on the quarterback draw and he will take it not enough for the first down on the third and six Everything's settling down a little bit now for both offenses. Both defenses getting a little bit more of a feel on the quarterback draw by Pinkins. Kevin Burnett works his way in and makes that play, and JT Mapu. Josh Brown, the redshirt sophomore out of Clarksburg, Maryland, prepares to punt the ball away, and Rashad Baker is back deep. Let's see if they block Marvin Mitchell. Takes the snap, and there's that step to the right. Not quite as uh, pronounced this time, and a short kick. And Baker's going to take it, standing right around four South Carolina players. Baker on the return. Crowfoot will make the tackle, 37 on the kick, and two on the return. We'll be right back. We're tied at 14. Well, if you're just now joining us, uh, Ron Franklin, Mike Godfrey, Adrian Karsten, great to have you along here at Neyland Stadium. This series has really turned into a close contest in recent years. Uh, Tennessee has uh, carried the ball as far as victories uh, by a pronounced number. But the Lou Holtz's club keeps getting closer and closer. Right now, we've got a 14-14 ball game with uh, just under nine and a half to play until intermission. Jabari Davis again in at tailback, and he gets the carry to the right side. And it's going to be tough sledding as he will get it to the 49-yard line of South Carolina, but only a gain of three. Here's Marvin Mitchell. They're going to make sure they block him this time. Now, he blocked an earlier punt. He came free. Now they get a little brush there, and then the up back's waiting for him. So they make sure Marvin Mitchell's cooking. He occupied that time. They had the bullfight. The Ole blocked the last time on him, and he blocked that punt. Yeah, the putter it takes a step or two to his right to try to get that overspin on the ball, but he walked right into it on the last punt attempt. This pass a little too tall at the 31-yard line. Swain, the intended receiver. 
Tennessee's had good field position, Ron. They're not taking advantage of it here. The Tennessee in the own 49, uh, South Carolina starting on their own 17. So I know Philip Fulmer wants something out of this series. Well, you know, the other thing that, that you have seen in this quarter, South Carolina has changed up their defense and is stopping the run where Tennessee had their way in the opening quarter on the ground. I think both teams' defenses have made adjustments now and stopped the run. Linebackers stay at home. Clawson's going to run, and he runs right into the arms of Gauze. George Gauze, a junior out of Conway, South Carolina. His brother Andre plays strong safety for the game Gauze. Has seven career sacks. Chris Kosh, the defensive coordinator, says he's the best pass rusher we have this year. In fact, he also paid him a great compliment, saying he is the most improved of their defensive linemen. Second punt by Tennessee. Cole Kut. Well, the time clock had not run down. Undoubtedly, we don't have enough men on the line of scrimmage. So let's see. That was substitution infraction. Yep. Broke the huddle. By the call. offense. Penalty is five yards from the previous spot. Repeat of fourth down. Saw this called a couple of times today in the Florida uh, Kentucky game. Well, Doyle's counting right now, only count 11. Tennis. Jimmy Cole could, of course, his, his dad, 43.9, and Dustin with an average of 42 and a half. And, Ron, they're pulling the flag back because I don't think they did find the 12th guy. You find him at Texas a and Good snap, and here is another high, high good coverage kick. And the return man just runs away from it, bounds all the way into the end zone. I tell you, Colquitt has really come up with a very tough weapon. Left footers are tough enough to catch, but he puts it a mile high. That's a 50-yard kick, and we'll take a break. 14 apiece. Welcome back to Knoxville. First down, South Carolina following that 50-yard punt. And a scrimmage from their own 20-yard line. There's Richmond right there. Constantine. Mark Jones back in the ball game. From wide receiver to defensive back, number 10. Plenty of time on this uh, play clock for Pinkins. And he puts it in the stomach of Summers. Gets by the first wave of tacklers and then is going to be dragged down at the 24-yard line by Kevin Simon. Ron, when you play a two-back offense like this, like the old single wing, Kevin Burnett, the linebacker, is going to be on the uh, running back side. He has got to be responsible for Dondrell Pinkins. So every time Dondrell Pinkins gives that ball or fakes that ball, you're going to see Kevin Burnett slow play that and stay with the quarterback. Summers, what an impressive night. Eight carries, 79 yards. Here's the pass. Drills it in and out of the hands of uh, Goodman. And that thing actually was thrown a little bit hard. Mike, talk to me about one thing. South Carolina's had a lot of drops this year. That ball was a little bit behind him and a little too strong. But could it have something to do with Pinkins and the fact that he does throw differently, not gripping the ball? Does it spin differently? Uh, 21 drop passes in the first three games. I don't think so. I think that, that one would have been a tough catch. But early in the year, they were just dropping open passes. Two of five on third down conversions. But again, Cox, boy, he gets whacked down hard. Back at the 14-yard line, Haroldson, along with Mapu and Dickerson, applying pressure. We have an offensive game in the first quarter, a defensive game in the second quarter. Dondrell Pinkins is going to get hit here by Haroldson and Dickerson, like you said. Good twist stunt. The both defensive linemen twisted, and South Carolina's offensive line did not pick it up. Well, let's see what uh, kind of move they come up with this time as far as the punter is concerned. It's a good snap. You can see him take the step to the side, and it, he gets the overspin, and Baker's going to have to let it run by. Bowers is the man who punted at that time, and that's effective if you can kick it away from the return guy. It's interesting because of the splits. You get guys downfield right away. 
Well, tomorrow at 8.30 Eastern, it's ESPN Sunday Night Football. It's two high-scoring offenses, Peyton Manning and Marvin Harrison, and the Indianapolis Colts take on Aaron Brooks and the New Orleans Saints. That's the Colts versus the Saints, Sunday night, 8.30 at ESPN, and available nationwide on ESPN HD. It all starts with NFL Primetime, presented by Miller Lite at 7.30 Eastern. Cedric Houston makes his first appearance for a while, and he's going to break it for five, has ten, still fighting. It'll be a gain of ten, and Cedric Houston comes back onto the turf and does very well behind the block of Michael Munoz. Not in a three-week period this summer, Cedric Houston's aunt died, grandmother, and father died in the month of June, and... Uh, he told me the other day on the practice field, he said every run I dedicated to the three of them. He really had, I mean, it was a tough summer. I was up here in June, and he came to our camp that we had for team focus, and he talked to the boys, and uh, he just, uh, he said when he hears a sad song, he just thinks of all three of those individuals. Well, he is running inspired this evening again. It is a first down. The ball at the 41 and a half yard line. You see, we have just gone underneath seven minutes left in his opening half. Tied at 14. Clausen gives it to Houston. And this time being a hit at the line of scrimmage. First man, Shropshire, hits him with, uh, he gets penetration. It's no game. Reese Davis, what do you got for us? What I got for you is SC on the comeback trail after Lindell White has scored a touchdown to make it 21-14. Cal's Aaron Rodgers trying to make a play. Instead, Logan Tutupu makes a play. A pick six in Pete Carroll's defense as number three team in the land back in it. Late in the third, now 21 off. And there's a very interested spectator, uh, Michael Puno's uh, father, Anthony, uh, in attendance here, all pro, Hall of Famer from the Cincinnati Bengals. Counter Trey got the blockers in front, and Houston turns the corner. 45 50, 45, and a flag is down back at the line of scrimmage. Marcus Lawrence on the stop defensively. And Tennessee walking back. So he raced that 13 yard run. Doyle Jackson says offensive holding volunteers. Well, and again, I'm going to say this uh, Philip Homer knows his team has had great field position in the first half. Lou Holtz on the other side knows his team's been backed up. And if you can stay tied 14-14, it's a win for South Carolina. Yep. Yep. No question about that. Philip Fulmer very happy with his team. He says uh, we're making progress. They get better every week. They're a fun team to be around. And, uh, and that's big, Mike, because all teams are not fun to be around. No. No, but winning seems to make it fun. Second down to 19. Clausen sets deep in the pocket. First two receivers not open. Going to try to scramble, and he's going to be hit and knocked down by Cause. Not much going on there. And you can see that a headgear came off, and Cody Douglas is the man in the fray who had his headgear knocked away by the defensive lineman. Ron, only a four-man rush. So South Carolina doing a pretty good job of defending the pass in case of Clawson doesn't have anywhere to go with the ball. I, we got to look at that again. You saw why Cody Douglas lost his headgear because it was tied up in the face mask of the man who made the tackle. <laughs> oh, my. Well, he was tackled by a two-headed guy. Good coverage in the secondary. Now gets it away and throws it complete to Tony Brown. And the junior out of Lauderdale Lakes picks up a huge first down. It's a gain of 20. Well, downtown Tony Brown is one of the most consistent receivers of this Tennessee football team. Now he comes open after the fake to Cedric Houston. But again, Casey Clawson heads on a swivel trying to find the open receiver. Good job of blocking by that offensive line that time. It's a very big first down because after the holding penalty, they needed 19 yards to pick up the first. Audible at the line of scrimmage from the 42. Clausen, far sideline again, got this one complete to Banks. 
James Banks, the sophomore out of Indianapolis, tackled immediately by Crawford, but that seems to be the side that they've had the most profit on. Yeah, James Banks does a nice job of pushing off. He may push you off on his hand, but he does a good job against Teddy Crawford of coming back for the football. James Banks is quite a story. Came here as a quarterback and still may wind up playing quarterback, but they needed help at wide receiver. Folks, this, you talk about a good athlete. He had basketball scholarship offers from both Purdue and Indiana. And he said, nope, I'm going to Tennessee. I'd have got to play football. That's his first catch. They fake the reverse, and they go straight ahead with the handoff, and it'll uh, go for no yardage at all. It'll be a second down and 10. And Ron, James Banks told me and you and Adrian the other day in spring he's going back to quarterback but it's interesting because in the summer Peyton Manning comes here and Casey Clawson were talking and Casey Clawson asked Peyton Manning who's the best receiver and he said move James Banks to wide receiver he's your best yeah, pretty good uh, pretty good observation from a very good ball player well, he gets the pass out in the flat, got it inside the 30. This is Troy Fleming, and the fullback is going to take it down to the 16-yard line, and that will move the change again, a gain of 13 yards on the play. And we were talking about they seem to be more profitable against Ted Crawford. DeAndre Island has come in over at quarterback to replace him. Island has been a starting safety for South Carolina, and they have moved into corner, and they use him at nickelback also. And Troy Fleming is a clutch performer, and Woody McCorvey, the running back coach, said he's an unselfish guy that they gave a game ball to in the Florida game last week because of effort on special teams. Good look at Island right there. Senior out of Tupelo, Mississippi. Got everything squared away down on the field. This is the eighth play of the Tennessee drive. Tied at 14, about to go under three minutes to play until halftime. You see the safety coming on the blitz. It goes straight ahead, and Houston runs right into him. Good call, or lucky call by South Carolina defensively. That's one Casey Clawson may have gone too far on and couldn't get out of because they ran right where the safety blitz it blitzed. You see him come up here, fullback blocks the linebacker, but Cedric Houston has nowhere to run. Too many folks to block. St. Pro is the man, as you could see, who made the tackle for South Carolina. Freddie St. Pro has uh, had himself a, a nice start in this ballgame. The transfer out of Dodge City Community College. Pass out in the flat. Got that with Tony Brown. And he's going to be dropped down for a loss. And it's Jermaine Harris, number six, who gets over to make the tackle. Jermaine is out of Peachtree City. And that play didn't have a chance because Tony Brown, when he caught the football, he had no place to go because Harris was roaring. Well, plus the fact Island did a good job of uh, shedding the block. <laughs> shedding the block, and he just wouldn't have any part of it. So it's third down for the Volunteers. They need to take the ball to the five and a half yard line. Clawson from the shotgun. In the end zone, overthrowing incomplete. Payton is the man that the pass was intended for. And to pass a little bit high, boy, Payton could have gotten himself injured on that one right there. A good job by the South Carolina defense. Jermaine Harris is the man who comes up with the hit. A little more on that pass and would have been completed. Yep. 33-yard field goal attempt. Will Hoyt, as we said, he had a 51-yarder against Florida last week. Good pass. Plenty of distance on this one, and he splits him. So we'll take a break. 141 left until halftime on our new score. Tennessee 17, South Carolina 14. So we're back with 141 showing on the clock in the second quarter. Tennessee goes back on top 17 to 14. And uh, is Mike Godfrey very astutely uh, surmised in uh, the early portion of uh, this quarter. We had a, a horse race in uh, period number one. But here in the second quarter, adjustments have been made by the two defensive coordinators, and play has slowed down considerably. Neither team really able to run the ball in the second quarter. Thomas and Newton. That's uh, Thomas who was pointing up toward the sky. 
waiting for the kickoff from Will Hoyt. Ten, uh, South Carolina used all three of their timeouts, so no chance to stop the clock. Well, he's going to go down on one knee, five yards deep in the end zone. Reese Davis, let's go back to you. All right, Ryan, Trev, Albert, Smart, May here with me in Pontiac Halftime Report, High Performance Halftime Reports coming up. Not a great encore presentation for Oregon after that game against Michigan last week. Yeah, and USC down 21-7, to had no answer for Cal's offense, and then that's what they have called halftime. Make adjustments, ferocious rally so far in the second half. Coming up at halftime, I'll tell you what I believe is wrong with the Florida Gators. All right, and Chris Lee and Kirk will also join us. We'll break down a scintillating comeback by Arkansas against Alabama. We'll see you in a few minutes now. Okay, South Carolina, no timeouts left. They used the ball, and uh, Peace will come up and make the hit on Summers. Robert Peace, the middle linebacker, has been a very steady performer uh, in this opening half of play. Summers has been extremely uh, good himself, as that carry right there is going to put him closer to 100 yards. Nine attempts, 87 yards for Demetrius Summers, the freshman out of Lexington, South Carolina. Gets it again. Big opening this time. He's going to have the first down. And he'll take it out to the 34. Rashad Baker on the stop. Now I think you see South Carolina because they got the ball at the 34-yard line. I'm not sure whether they want to kill the clock here. You'll know on this play. If they throw the football here, they're going to try to go as a two-minute offense. If they run it, they're just trying to kill it. Yeah, that's kill what it. they're going to do. They're going to run it. Troy Williamson was the man down uh, to the bottom of your screen, wide to the left. Kevin Burnett comes over to make the tackle right here on uh, Summers. And again, they used all three of their timeouts when actually, Early. They, yep, they had uh, confusion on offense and rather than get a five-yard delay penalty. So you can't argue with that aspect of it, but right now they need one of them. Clock runs 33 down to 32 seconds. That's a substitution. They broke with 12. Yeah. Doyle got 12 here. Mm -hmm. In the second half, Ron, you're going to see two really good performers on offense. Casey Clawson has opened it up, and uh, he has thrown some very good passes here in the first half. And Demetrius Summers, the freshman running back, has had a very good first half. And I'm sure Lou Holtz and Skip Holtz will try to run him in the second half to take that lead. There's Casey right there. You see his numbers, 9 of 13, 114, and a touchdown for Summers. He is at 95 yards already. That's almost double what Tennessee has been allowing as a team per ball game. Here he goes again. Gets by one tackle. He's got 10, got 15, and count that off at a run of almost 18 yards. Peace again defensively. Now here's where you wish you had timeouts. Yep. Yeah, they're right back at the line of scrimmage. They only have four ticks left on the clock. Yeah, they're going to spike this. And they had to wait until the ball was made ready for play. And now the clock actually didn't move, and that's the reason there's a stir. A little bit of a Twitter from the crowd here. Yeah, Tennessee last week threw the Hail Mary against Florida and hit it. And South Carolina's probably going to try the same thing Wait right here. This is why timeouts are so special. Here's that uh, Hail Mary. Banks is the man who will uh, look up and see, my goodness, look what I found. In Gainesville, they just turned off the TV on that play. That gave them their only score of the first half, and it happened just at halftime. Back in the pocket, going to throw a Hail Mary. This is a mile high as the flag is down behind the line of scrimmage, and this play is going to be knocked down and incomplete. Now, let's check the marker as the Tennessee team is headed toward the locker room, and they're being told to hold up. Yeah, yeah, this is offensive ball. holding, so it'll be declined. Oh, wait a minute. We got offsetting. We'll do it again. We have holding by the offense, offsides by the defense. These two fouls offset. We will have at least one on time down in the second quarter. Go back again. They squandered their timeouts in the first half. And right now, in the last minute and a half, they could have used those timeouts. Big time, yeah. 
no question about that. So here we go with a, an untimed play. And the South Carolina coaches screaming to the receiver at the top of your screen to step up. They didn't have enough men on the line of scrimmage. Throws another one for the end zone. And this one is going to be intercepted by Tennessee. Let's see who got it. Johnson with the interception. And you see the numbers of the Volunteers when they are leading at halftime since 1990. Adrian Karsten, let's go down to the field and uh, check with you. Coach, how much did you miss those timeouts here at the end of the first half? Well, they're setting the clock faster than they ever had. And he said, well, that came down from the conference commissioner. But it's just setting it so fast, and then they're so loud, and we have to check off. It, we're just having a difficult time. But I don't think it really mattered because we were going to run the clock out when we were backed up. Finally, after we got out here, then you decide, well, with four seconds to go. Scoreboard says you're down by three. You really believe, though, you won that first half? Well, we made some mistakes in the passing game, pass defense. We had some mental errors, some breakdowns. Uh, we're not getting pressure on the passer. The kid just didn't kick the ball like he was supposed to. When you pressure, you take one step and kick it. But, you know, we just have to go in and come back out and play the second half. They're a very good football team. But, you know, we're, we're a pretty good team, too. Appreciate it, Coach. Ron? So it's halftime with our score, Tennessee 17-14. to Now here's Reese Davis, Trev Alberts, and Mark May. So we're back in Knoxville, and it is another Saturday night, and uh, we got a good one going here at Neyland Stadium in Knoxville, Tennessee, 17-14, to with uh, Tennessee on top. And the consensus, Mike, at a halftime around the press box was Demetrius Summers has been the difference in the ball game because South Carolina just far more proficient running the ball, a better team than they have been. They're running the ball well. They can't pass the ball as well. And then on the other side, Tennessee's throwing the ball very well, can't run the ball. Uh, so one of these two teams is going to get that phase of the game going and control the second half. And yeah, we'll see who does make the best adjustments to, uh, to be able to do that. If uh, South Carolina is able to throw it better in the second half, and if the Volunteers are able to run it better in the second half. Joey Bowers attempts to kick it off. Corey Larkins, the deep man for Tennessee, standing at the goal line. It's a really wobbly kick taken at the 10-yard line, out across the 20, and he'll be tackled at the 26-yard line. Adrian Karsten, what do you have for us? Phil Fulmer loved the pace of this game early in the first three or four minutes, especially right after they blocked the punt and take it in for a touchdown the very next play. What he wants to do, run, and Mike, is crank up the pace of this game again because that's when they could run. That is going to mean this adjustment, probably some no huddle. That'll get Casey moving faster, especially on third down. He said then we'll be moving the way we want to with a good balance on both run and pass. Okay, good observation there, Adrian. 17 to 14, uh, his club leads it, and they come out in an eye formation. And Houston bounces it outside at the 30, and that is a really fine open field tackle by Jermaine Houston Harris. Tonight's game track being brought to you by Bridgestone. This is what happened in that first 30 minutes. Houston, first TD of the season. Just muscles his way in from three yards out. Clawson, very efficient as usual. Puts that one right where it needed to be. And Summers, boy, this young man has really been impressive. Over 100 yards in that first half. Tennessee also playing here with a second down and shorty. Houston's going to bounce it outside and close to the first down, but they're going to say about a yard and a half Houston. short. Lawrence and Lowry to make the tackle. Second half last week against Florida, Tennessee was able to run the ball and muscle Florida a little bit in the second half. They're going to try to do the same thing to South Carolina's defense because they threw the ball well in the first half. Now they feel like their offensive line's big. They'll wear on this defense, and they can run the ball. They could see where the yellow line is. They are just about a yard and a half short of picking up the first down. They need the 36. Bootleg. Lawson's going to keep it, and he dives for the first down very wisely. Does not take any more punishment than he really needs. And boy, where they have spotted him, he's short. I... <laughs> Casey is standing there saying to the official, uh, I thought I was farther than this. He's not going to have the first down. Uh, 
according to the yellow line. And Mike, would you go for no. a fourth down and short this deep? No. Punt to football. Boy, this is put an asterisk by, by that spot. Asterisk, yeah. Because uh, see where he gets. His knee, his knee goes down first, though. He got the right spot. I take that back. Third punt by Tennessee. Colquitt waits for the snap back at the 22-yard line. Summers, the deep man for South Carolina. In the first half, when Colquitt did punt, very high, good coverage kicks. Let's see if he can do that again. Left footer, boy, this spirals get a turnover. Sails way over the head of Summers and takes a Tennessee bounce out of bounds at the one and a half yard line. How about that? 64 yards in the kick by Dustin Colquitt. So that flips the field. That's right almost there. worth not getting the first down to pin South Carolina inside their five yard line. That was an excellent punt. Well, most teams would have gotten very good field position or decent field position and Colquitt is so so proficient he got that thing to turn over and sets him up one and a half yards outside their own end zone and now here comes the crowd into play Pinkins with a lot of noise to his back Rolls to his right, wants to throw, and he's going to put it up down the far sideline. And there was a lot of pushing and shoving there by both receiver and defensive back. Incomplete. Ron, I want to go back to what Lou Holt said to uh, Adrian Carson be at halftime. He talked about the pace of the game, and you get in a rhythm uh, with referees. When referees start the ball and play, and you know you got so much time to signal your play in and get your substitutions in. And what Lou Holtz was complaining about was too fast a pace, and we had to spend our three timeouts because we would get a delay of game call. Every referee's different. So second down and 10. You can see the home crowd right behind Dondrell Pinkins making as much noise as it can. Rolls it to the right again. Drills this pass. Has it complete for the first down out across the 14 to the 15. That's uh, Donnings on the receiving end, the senior out of Tallahassee by way of Butler Community College. Greer good, on the stop. Good play call by Skip Colts, Holtz because you're rolling Dondrell Pinkins to the right side, his throwing side. You got max protection in there. You can't get sacked in the end zone, and Donnings runs a good route. But the only the only chance that you're taking, you won't you the can't get side. offensive holding in the end zone, which obviously is a, is a safety. Here's Summers, big opening. Look at that jab step, but he takes it back out to the left, out close to the 19-yard line. Robert Peace, who has been extremely steady in this ball game tonight, comes over to make the tackle, number 41, the senior out of uh, Ruston, Louisiana. You know a name we haven't called much, Kevin Simon. That's right. And he may be well be among the best linebackers in the country. One tackle, we have him officially. Mike in that first half of play. There's a look at Simon right there. And we mentioned he recorded 16 against Florida last week. Pitch back to Summers. Hit behind the line of scrimmage. Gets by Peace. And now it's going to be gang tackled. Peace was there and got just enough of him. Tennessee pursues so rapidly. And Rashad Baker came over first to hit him and knock him down. You're going to see Robert Peace and Kevin Burnett fighting off blocks. No place to go, and then Rashad Baker comes up and finishes it off. Big play right here, Mike. Third down at about, oh, they need to take it to the 22-and-a-half-yard line. If Tennessee could get very good field position out of this situation, plus the fact South Carolina got one punt blocked earlier in the first half. There's a pass that is almost intercepted, thrown too low. Kevin Burnett almost came up with the football. Yeah, Kevin Burnett also has a brother that's an outstanding high school football player, Kalen, out in California. Almost came up with this interception. You're right. You see him patiently staying in there. He jumps on the hard turner, the tight end. Ball thrown low. 
Bowers is the man who is back to kick. He is the one who takes the side step and had the kick blocked. Gets a good pass. Gets the boot away very quickly. The low bounder picked up on the run. That's Baker. And Baker is hit immediately at the 45-yard line. But if he lets it go, it would have been 15 yards farther downfield. 39 and a kick and three on the return. So welcome back. 11.50 left to play third quarter. And now you can see the difference how the field was split on Colquitt's punt of 64 yards just a moment ago. Tennessee gets the ball with excellent field position at the 45-yard line. Cedric Houston now the man at the top of the eye, number 31. Clausen with an option, short drop, gets hit on the blitz, and that pass thrown incomplete. Casey took a big hit just as he delivered the ball. Marcus Lawrence coming on the blitz. Take a look at the first half stats. What jumps out at you, Coach? Here, here Ryan, right here. 212 yards are averaging rushing the football, and they got 46. If they're going to win this football game, they got to find a way to run the ball, get the ball in Cedric Houston's hand or Jabari Davis, and mash the South Carolina defense a little bit. Scott Wells comes out over the football, and he'll go shotgun again. South Carolina showing blitz. They come off the corner. Clausen in trouble. That's the blitz man who's going to bring him down, and it's number 16, Jamesia Jackson. Richard Jr. out of Sumter, South Carolina. What's happened to Tennessee, they've become one-dimensional in the throwing game. And their, their run, lack of running game, now all of a sudden, South Carolina's coming after Casey Clawson. Play action doesn't mean much, does no, it? No, it doesn't. That faked uh, Cedric Houston. Nobody's buying it. They're coming. Well, there's, uh, there's his father, Jim. Casey went through a lot last year physically. In fact, a lot of kids would have... They wouldn't have played as hurt as he was, but the uh, tough youngster, but he took pretty good shot just a moment ago. They're going to call a timeout and discuss it because it is a third down. They need to take it all the way to the South Carolina 45 yard line. And here's a reminder that tomorrow at 8.30 Eastern, it's ESPN Sunday Night Football. Two high-scoring offenses, Peyton Manning along with Marvin Harrison, and the Indianapolis Colts against Aaron Brooks and the New Orleans Saints. Uh, the Colts versus the Saints Sunday night, 8.30 on ESPN. And, of course, available nationwide on ESPN HD. It all starts at NFL Primetime, presented by Miller Lite at 7.30 Eastern. Anthony Munoz... In attendance for tonight's ball game. See the years that he played. Horace Gregg was the head coach, I believe, when he played for the Bengals. And uh, they had great teams. Kenny Anderson, uh, he protected him, the quarterback. And I'll tell you, his son has gone through a lot of physical yeah, problems, yeah. shoulder surgery, knee surgery. Uh, but he, the coaches say he is feeling better and playing the best that he has played since being here at Tennessee. He's a mountain too, 6'6", 305 pounds. That's the baby son. <laughs> he is a large man. Uh, I just remember one of the coaches said when he came here that his dad, while other kids were out running around playing in the snow in Cincinnati, his dad had him in the basement teaching him how to block the furnace. <laughs> that poor furnace he never did work. Third down and 16. Here comes the blitz off the other corner, and they throw the screen right where the vacated blitz man came from. But a nice job as Houston is going to be tackled after a gain of about eight yards, I believe. And that's Wilson, Rodriguez Wilson, who is there to make the stop. That's what offensive coordinators go to when you get blitzed and blitzed, and then you get blitzed again. You throw the screen pass. It picked up good yardage, but not enough for the first down. Colquitt with his uh, fourth punt of the night. The last one off the left footers. Effort, 64 yards. Didn't need to kick this one that far. Very high. Good coverage kick again. Summer's going to run away from it. And it's going to bound at the 10. Inside the 5. And the coverage team is right there. I don't believe it. This one's at the 1-yard one line. 
51 yards in this kick. Let's take a timeout. Hope, but right now, owns him. <laughs> yes, we do. From the one-yard line, South Carolina, 99 yards away. Summers is the lone setback as they go from the shotgun. Fakes it to him. Wants to throw, goes on top. And this pass is going to be well overthrown. Let me show you what South Carolina can do to you. They did this against Virginia when they were 99 yards away. Shotgun. There's Troy Williamson. Goodbye. 99 yards later. We mentioned that uh, John Chavis said that the defensive coordinator for Tennessee said these guys have got track speed. Well, you can see how quickly he took it from coast to coast on that one. I'll tell you one thing problem South Carolina is going to have with that spread punt. They're going to have to tighten it up if they don't get a first down here to punt the football. That's right. Second down and 10 from the one. Gives it to Summers, tries to bounce it outside. He does. And Summers, I tell you what, I think he got the first down, Mike. He's very close across the 10-yard line. Demetrius Summers does a good job of bouncing the football, giving a leg and taking it back. Well, Kevin Simon, I think, just recorded his second tackle of the night. They lost the edge. That was a big first down for South Carolina. Boy, I'm telling you. It's the point that Mike is making. They've already had one punt blocked. And they didn't want to have to have a punter 10 yards behind the snapper. Look at this. Bounces it back to the left after going to the right where there was nothing. And he's going to wind up with a gain of about seven. Reese Davis, let's check with you. Number three team in the land, Ron. USC against Cal. Ryan Kali needs his field goal to force overtime, and he delivers. SC's won 11 in a row. Only one team had stayed within single digits of them. It was Cal, and they're going to overtime. LSU and State, Bayou Bengals on top by a touchdown. Our situation, Tennessee leads by three. About to go under nine minutes to play third quarter. South Carolina playing with a second down and short as this play is going to be whistled down. And I think we have movement in the line. Marker on the play. Good ball start. So a five-yard step off. And this makes it quite a difference. My instead of second down and two, two and a half, it's going to be about seven, seven and a half yards to get the first down. Real impressed with Demetrius Summers, uh, the running young running back. He looks like he does it with ease. Oh, he does. He's already got 139 yards. Now consider, you said it had been against passing teams, but Tennessee was only allowing barely over 50 yards per ball game. Look at that average per carry. 8.7. Tennessee creeps those safeties up. And they come off the edge. There's Summers, and he's hit behind the line of scrimmage. That's a good job of penetration by Omar Gaither, a sophomore out of Charlotte, North Carolina. Now it's third and long, South Carolina. That's the way you beat the toss sweep. You get up field and beat the fullbacks block. Omar Gaither right in the backfield. Summers, nowhere to run. Well, they brought him up to the line of scrimmage to crowd, and then they brought him off the edge. Well, you can see he made a really nice play around the fullback's block. South Carolina, two of seven tonight. They had missed their last three third down conversions. Drills this one over the middle. Got it complete for the first down to Newton. The freshman out of Wallace, South Carolina. And you've got to be impressed with the way South Carolina has just not been intimidated at all with big play situations. Kevin Burnett defensively. Yeah, it's a crossing route. Williamson goes outside. Newton goes inside. He uh, hits him right in front of Kevin Burnett. That's a good throw by Pinkins. Dundrell Pinkins. Stands back in the shotgun. Drills his pass over the middle, got it complete, and it's Goodman. Goodman inside the 25 and has finally tackled at the 23 and a half yard line. 
Jason Mitchell finally stopped him, but it's 42 yards. We talked about the second half. One of these two teams was going to do what they didn't do in the first half, and all of a sudden, South Carolina has found their passing game. Gets two deep coverage. They hit Goodman in the middle. Two really fun group of wide receivers to watch, both Tennessee and South Carolina. Some extremely gifted athletes. Hankins now 137 yards, one touchdown, one pick. Tennessee up by three, but South Carolina trying to challenge that. Summers breaks the tackle, cuts it back into the middle, inside the 20. He's to the 17, Robert Peace, with still another tackle. When Tennessee goes back and looks at this tape, there's going to be a lot of missed tackles on yeah. Demetrius Summers. A back like this can make you look bad, Mike. They're making Tennessee's defense look bad tackling. Yeah. Robert Peace now in double figures. The middle linebacker for the ball has 10 tackles on the night. Summers waiting for the blocks. He'll have one yard. Constantine Richmond comes up to make the tackle. Marvin Mitchell also there to help out. The reserve middle linebacker. As I mentioned back in the, the first half, it, it is just almost impossible to believe that Summers had 127 touchdowns in high school and over 9,000 rushing yards. After seeing him tonight, I understand. <laughs> Nobody can tackle him. Tennessee can't tackle him. This drive started on their own one-yard line. This is the ninth play of the drive coming up. You see the balls coming up on the outside. They come with the blitz, hit behind the line of scrimmage, and it's going to be Constantine Richmond. And we talked about the speed that he possesses because yep. when he grew up in Germany, he was a sprinter. Here's what happens on this play. South Carolina comes up with an end over, which means tight ends over here and both wide receivers. Tennessee knows the football is going in this direction. They come up, they get upfield, make the tackle, Richmond, on Summers. Weaver to attempt a 37-yard field goal. Good pass. Ball is down. The kick is on its way. And he got it. And Daniel Weaver ties the ball game. And you see his teammates jumping up and down. And, and Coach Holtz, we're going to show you some video when we come back. Weaver has really had some problems. He won against Ohio State in the bowl game a year before last, and since then has really had difficult times. This team is pulling for it. We're tied. We'll come right back. Folks, we got a good one going here. Tied for the third time tonight. The two coaches pacing the sideline. Let me show you about 90 minutes before the ball game tonight. Lou Holtz came out early specifically to watch Daniel Weaver because the youngster has really been having problems. They've changed holders. They've thought about changing snappers. He won the game against Ohio State down in Tampa, the Outback, year before last. And since then, Lou jokingly said this week, hey, ever since I put the kid on scholarship, it's like I put a monkey on his back. Well, you see the reaction from Coach Holtz and from the team. They're pulling hard for this kid. He went out early and watched him in pregame and said, yeah, you know, he's he's our guy. He's going to kick. And you could see the look of relief on Weaver's face. Yep, I just tied this ball game up at 17. Got to be a good feeling after, because you know for a kicker, when they get something between their ears that is not right, it's difficult. Anytime the head coach watches a specific position, you know it's going to be well. They're going to do a good job. Reese Davis, let's check back with you. As seen, Cal in overtime. Trojans on the doorstep, about to go in. Herschel Dennis has a hole, but Herschel Dennis does not have the football. And the Tedfords stop the Trojans, and now Cal has a chance to win it. Tyler Fredrickson, toe meets leather. Leather meets Greg Gunther's midsection, and the Trojans have saved themselves, and we're still play on in overtime. Alrighty, Jabari Davis comes in this ball game at tailback for Tennessee. And keep in mind, folks, this is the third drive of the second half as Davis turns the corner, and he's going to have 10. Handed off at about 13 yards, and there's a flag back behind the play. Tennessee on two drives has only 12 yards in the second half of play. Looks like this is going to be a holding, because when you get the corner like that, something has to happen. Ron, I want to mention that Southern Cal game. 
that play, if they go to the national championship game, that will be the play at Southern Cal because you need a little bit of breaks along the way to go to the championship. That was a big play for Southern Cal. Well, Anthony Munoz, of course, went to Southern Cal. I don't know that he is aware or really cares that much right now because <laughs> no. he's watching his son he's play. Wearing orange. That's the most important thing to him right now. Jabari Davis again, the man at the top of the eye. They walk off the penalty. A first down and 17. Here's Davis, right up the middle. Gonna have six yards, maybe seven. Tell you, South Carolina has done a good job with their adjustments, and they, up until this point, have semi taken the run away from the Volunteers, and that is the difference in the ball game yeah. right now because Tennessee needs to run the football 15 yards in the second half to set up Casey Clawson in the throwing game and penalties have hurt. Cedric Houston may have, he had that hip pointer against Florida. Maybe that's bothering him right now. Tennessee also was at 27 yards in offense erased by penalties in this one tonight. Under four and a half to play. There's that blitz off the corner, and the ball is knocked down by the blitzing defender, Jackson. Jamasia Jackson, a redshirt junior out of Sumter, fired, still another shot. I'm looking at the offensive line, O'Ron, and one of the things, they look a little confused right now as I watch them uh, go back to the huddle because they can't figure out who's picking up who here. Jackson, number 16, uh, comes Scott free and knocks the ball down. So the offensive line looks a little confused for Tennessee. Cedric Houston comes back into the lineup with the third down, third and 13. From the shotgun, this time they pick up the blitz. Deep pass pattern, and that ball is intercepted by Gauze. Andre Gauze, and a flag has come in. We may have pass interference called against South Carolina. And as Tony Brown was on the uh, pass pattern, he got knocked away, and I believe that's they're going to call it on Goss, number 19. A collision. Well, I don't need to tell you, Lou is, uh, is not real happy. Take another look at the play. Yeah, Tony Brown's going to run down and collide with number 19, Goss. And the ball's in the air. And the interference is called. And Lou is now debating. And he's going to lose. Yep. That was a big play for Tennessee because our offense has stumbled around. Yeah, that's right. I, I just said how many yards they had lost by way of penalties. They gained a big one right there. Jabari Davis behind his uh, blocker. Going to be hit and knocked down after a very short gain. Smith trying to block for him, and Mo Thompson got around the blocker and uh, put the stop on him. Again, I, w I wonder about Cedric Houston's health right now. They do play several backs in the backfield of Tennessee. Maybe they feel Jabari Davis a little bit bigger, uh, uh, tougher runner maybe uh, in some instances from Cedric Houston. So they're going with him now. Houston 10 carries, 34 yards. He did score a touchdown. As Jabari Davis continues to work a tailback. And they come to the end of the round. It's Mark Jones. And Jones with a head of steam. It's a good open field tackle. And if Lance Laurie doesn't make the stop, it might have been six. Reese Davis. Around second overtime. Cal has the ball first against SC. Reggie Robertson's in at quarterback. Aaron Rodgers got benched after a pick. And Robertson finds Jonathan McConan. And the Bears on top, 31-24. SC trying to answer. Yep. Boy, we talked during the timeout. I, I don't care who wins that ball game. That that young Cal staff has been very impressive, and that team has gotten better since we had them open the game against K State. They, they chose to play Kansas State, and I think that'll help them as they go down the season. 
Well, you saw Cedric Houston back in the lineup, and they get penetration. He'll be knocked down for a loss. That's Dante Robinson. Boy, that's an all-star play right there. And you better be careful here. Make it a team celebration, not uh, individual. Dante Robinson comes inside. The tight end doesn't pick him up. Victor McClure, and he comes free and makes the tackle on Cedric Houston. Now the best part of Tennessee's game right now. Yep, the punny. Colquitt, this will be his fifth punt of the night, averaging over 53 per boot. One out at the one and a half, and one out at the one yard line. And this one not quite as good. Spiral's not going to turn over, but being a left footer, takes that uh, awkward kind of bounce out of bounds at the 25 yard line. Well, on ESPN and ABC, Monday night, that's all the NFL action at 7 30 on ESPN. It's Monday night countdown presented by UPS. Stuart Scott and the gang bring you analysis, interviews, and highlights. And then at 9 o'clock, join Al Michaels and John Madden in Chicago for ABC's Monday Night Football, the 166th edition of the most storied rivalry in the NFL. It's the Bears battling Brett Favre and the rival Green Bay Packers. From the shotgun, Summers gets the ball, a hit at the line of scrimmage. I beg your pardon, it is Dacus Terman, who is the ball carrier. Reese Davis, back to you. Brian, you might have seen a priority score at the bottom. SC matches the touchdown. Matt Leiter finds Terry Colbert. Check out this effort. Oh, what an athletic move for Colbert. We're going to triple overtime, tied at 31. <laughs> now, Southern Cal's not guilty of not having a bunch of athletes. <laughs> Baker's Terman, they set the screen, and the ball is misfired, and it's because of the pressure. If they get the screen, he's still running because they had the best call on for Tennessee's defense, but they just couldn't get it off. They have nobody out here. Burnett, and he's coming on the blitz, but he just had to deliver the pass a little bit too soon. Lou's going to look at that one uh, tomorrow and say, oh boy. 113 left in the third quarter. Third down, they need to take it out to the 36-yard line. Tennessee shows blitz, and here they come. Throws this one, uh, just throws it away. Way up on top at the 38-yard line. The Tennessee put pressure on Dondrell Pinkins. They're bringing a house. Kevin Burnett comes from the outside. Puts pressure on Tinkin, and he throws the ball away. Joey Bowers. Third time that he would have punted tonight. And the shot baker, the deep man for the volunteers. the pressure on and I tell you they came very close on that one Marvin Mitchell again that's going to roll dead at around the 41 yard line so Tennessee trying to get themselves another block it's only 31 yards in the kick but if you're a South Carolina fan the, the big thing is the punt was not blocked yeah every time they punt Marvin Mitchell is licking his chops right here he comes has a shot again and they didn't pick him up. No, they didn't block him again. Marvin saying, hey, I like this. Marvin's had a good night on special teams. He got the one block, put pressure on right there. Also had a, a really nice open field tackle back in the first half. Cedric Houston back in the ball game. Gets the ball, nothing to the outside. Tries to take it to the middle. Gain of three before Jackson is there to tackle him from his free safety spot. Been a second half for Tennessee where you, they get a penalty and they get backed up. And they don't really get positive yards on first down. Let's, let's see what they can do. They got three yards here on first down. See if they can sustain this drive. Instead of playing with second down and short, Tennessee for the most part has played with second and long here in the second half. Pitch. Houston puts a head down running tough, and I think with that second effort, he just picked up a first down. Randy Sanders said his running backs run with an attitude, and Cedric Houston did with an attitude on that play. 
Well, the interesting thing is for Randy Sanders and his offense, Mike only the first time, and it's going to be on the last play of the third quarter, that they will have been across midfield in the second half. That is the end of the third quarter, so let's take a timeout. Tennessee 17, South Carolina 17. We've got a good one as we head to the final 15. The faces of blue. Some happy, some not so happy at this ball game. We'll be back. So as we head to the final 15 minutes, tied at 17, it is Tennessee in offense with their best field position of the second half. Smokey likes it. And a scrimmage from the South Carolina 47. Pitch comes back to Houston. Pull back with the lead block, and he will power his way to the 41. And tonight's game track being brought to you by Bridgestone. The story really of the third quarter, Colton, two punts inside the two-yard line. The left footer has just been nailing it. One at the one-and-a-half-yard line. That one right there, and another one that just tied at the one. Weaver. Well, the youngster makes good on this uh, field goal attempt right there. Finally gets one through. And his teammates and the coaching staff elated because they need his services. Second and four. Houston again as they work him hard. Not going to have the first down. It'll be third down Tennessee at about a yard and a half. George Gauze there to make the stop. I like what Tennessee's doing, though. They're turning this game over the offensive line to a uh, very veteran offensive line and Cedric Houston in the running game. And Philip Fulmer as a former offensive line coach under Johnny Major. So he knows the way to win this football game is take it over in the running game. Casey Clausen in his senior season really shown a lot of maturity and uh, Randy Sanders said it's just been a blessing to have as, as the quarterback because it's like having another offensive coach so to speak out on the field. He knows the offense so well. Right now they're going to call a timeout to stop the clock with 1344 left. Tennessee only two of eight in third down conversions. In fact Randy said an interesting thing at our meeting with him yesterday that if Casey the only time that he might get himself in a little trouble is he knows the offense so well he said he's a lot like Peyton Manning he might go back and, and call an audible of something that they hadn't run in four or five ball games, and everybody else might not be on the same page. You know, one thing about quarterbacks here, T. Martin, uh, Peyton Manning, uh, Casey Clawson, they know the offense so well. They're, they are an extension of the coaching staff, and I think of the Peach Bowl game that we had last year. We covered the Peach Bowl in Maryland, blew uh, Tennessee out, and when they got back from the Peach Bowl, uh, Kevin Burnett and uh, Casey Clawson called a meeting and they said hey we cannot have the effort we had this season we got to step it up so either you stay and step up the effort or you leave uh, town and uh, don't play for Tennessee so he's got good leadership qualities also well the spotlight tonight you see the numbers on Casey you see Houston 15 rushes 51 yards and uh, Brown two receptions 51 yards Right, right now, they need this third down, big time. Yeah, I think they changed formation to run the football. Well, they give it to Houston right up the middle, catch it back, he's open, 30, 25, stiff arm, and here comes a flag in, and boy, from where that is thrown, well, let's wait and see, 17 yards in the pass play. Fleming with the block. They're going to get a holding or a... Yeah. It is going to be a hold. Mark Jones, I believe, the wide receiver. Yeah. Number 10. They're going to call it on him. DeAndre Island is the corner, and Mark Jones worked against him. Here's Mark Jones. And he gets those hands outside. You see the left hand when your referee sees a left hand on the side, they're going to call holding every time. So the penalty will bring it back to the 33. The big thing for Tennessee is it is a first down because the hold occurred beyond the line of scrimmage. 
Houston again tries to bounce it back to the outside this time a much better job done by South Carolina Jackson on the stop Reese Davis back to you Cal and USC Tyler Fredrickson had already had two field goals blocked this to win it for the Bears right down the middle second longest winning streak in the land is history joy and Berkeley they storm the field Bears by three over SC So another ball club that uh, everybody thought was indestructible uh, goes down to the beat. Oregon got blitzed earlier today. Michigan last week. They're going to the penetration that time by Gauze, and he's going to stop Houston for a Houston loss. Actually, they're going to say he did pick up a yard, but it's going to be third down, and they're still going to need about six for the first. George Goss does a nice job of working inside here to make the play on Cedric Houston. Coach George, has talked George has to, played well. He really has, and the coach has talked about that he was the most improved of, uh, of the defensive front. He had really been working hard, and he showed it right there. Third down volunteers. They need the 23 of South Carolina. Clawson sets, five-step drop, going to go for the end zone. One-on-one -on -one there, and the ball incomplete. Back there defending Dante Robinson on Jason Swain. Pretty good coverage by Robinson. On the go route. I'll tell you what, he almost Got intercepted his hands that on day. It. You know, Mike, he's an interesting youngster. Uh, the conversation this week in a newspaper up in South Carolina about how he studies offenses. He watches the offensive line first to see how heavy they are on their hands, whether it's run or if it's pass. And then he starts studying receivers and their their habits and their trends and everything. He watches a lot of footage. 45-yard field goal attempt. Tennessee trying to take the lead. And wide right. So we'll take a timeout. 12.04. Left on the clock, still tied. Tennessee 17 and South Carolina 17. Welcome back to Knoxville, Tennessee. Of course, our College Football Saturday night is uh, presented on ESPN by High Definition. And of course, uh, Phillips and Best Buy, the exclusive sponsors with us. And as we pan back here and look at this uh, gigantic and beautiful plasma screen, Mike, high definition uh, has changed the way we will watch college football forever. And we are so proud that here on the College Football Saturday night that we're getting the opportunity to do it here on ESPN. Summers gets the handoff, spins off a tackle, and finally is going to wind up picking up about three yards. Constantine uh, Richmond on the stop. Summers has been high definition tonight. He has been the go-to guy for South Carolina. You know, even on that play right there, it's somebody had him around the shoulders. Still picked up three and a half still picked it, And that's what you were talking about. He has that innate ability to make people miss. He has 145 yards and 21 carries. Gets it again, right up the middle and close to the first down, but misses it by a half yard as Greg Jones defensively is there for the Volunteers. You look at Cedric Houston tonight with 71 yards. Demetrius Summers with 150 yards, averaging almost seven yards a carry. Well, the Tennessee faithful standing up, trying to help out the defense. Third and less than a yard, South Carolina. Summers tries to bounce it outside. Boy, this is going to be close. The linesmen come in and it would appear that he may just have it by the nose of the football. You can see the pushing and shoving between the two teams. Tennessee obviously hoping that uh, they're going to force a punt right here as Harrelson and uh, Richmond combining in the stop for the Volunteers. Robert Peace got hurt on that place. The middle linebacker is going to have to go to the sideline. Kevin Burnett made the play on that, but not before South Carolina gets the first down. Good blocking over there 
by Hart Turner. And I just you, made it. <laughs> it looked as though Robert Peace got leg whipped as he ran through the uh, the group of uh, linemen who were down in the ground. So they were checking his shin over across the way. First down, South Carolina. Drop for the tight end, Hart Turner. Flag, the flag is down. It's going to be roughing the passer. Penalty starting to hurt Tennessee. I was just thinking about Tennessee when they play Florida in the swamp, win that ball game. You saw Florida today go to Kentucky, had a little letdown, uh, didn't play up to par. But now Florida or Tennessee having the same thing. They got Auburn next week, then Georgia. You got a tough sandwich game right here with South Carolina. South Carolina now, making a personal tough foul, one. roughing the kicker by the defense. Henry's 15 yards from the previous spot, followed by first down. Well, obviously he meant roughing the passer. Well, Paris Harrelson is the uh, defender, but. Uh, you know, that was close. He didn't mention top yes. of the head gear, but it was close that it almost appeared he got him with the top of the head gear. Anyway, 15 yards stepped off against Tennessee. Slow developing play, lucky to get away. And deep to the end zone, incomplete, and a flag comes down at the eight-yard line. Now the fans are going to boo a little bit more here in a minute because they're going to get called for pass interference. Jabari Greer trying to cover Troy Williamson. I tell you, Dondrell Pinkins, fortunate he didn't get tackled for a loss because the play, he was trying to put on a good fake in the backfield. And they are going to call pass interference against the Volunteers. And he almost got him behind the line of scrimmage. And Pinkins' size helps him because he is a, a small... Uh, as a quarterback at Kentucky, Lorenzen's a big guy. Uh, Pinkins is 245 and 6'2. I didn't see the interference. I saw the left hand, and maybe that's what the official saw. Troy Williamson with good speed. Two costly penalties for Tennessee. First down, South Carolina. They have it to volunteer 31. Summers hit at the line of scrimmage, breaks off a tackle again, and he'll take it down to the 27, stopped by Jabril Wilson. And it was Mondre Dickerson who had his hands around him and couldn't secure him. Offensive line for South Carolina, big, all 300 pounds. But they have done a nice job against the front of Tennessee. Here's the call, the interference call. Oh, boy. Jabari Greer, but uh, didn't see it. It's going to be on South Carolina moving. Yeah, movement before the, the snap there. So five yards will be assessed against them. Tennessee with a little movement defensive line drew uh, South Carolina off. Well, they did ball, movement by the offensive line prior to the snap, penalty of five yards from the previous spot, followed by the second down. You know, John Chavis mentioned in our meeting yesterday, so we've got a lot of guys that are capable of big plays, but we're, we're not getting the big plays that we normally do, and we need to have that happen against South Carolina. We're going to need them. And they need one right now, Mike. South Carolina's protected the ball. Here comes the blitz off the corner. Going to have to hurry, and he's being chased down, and the ball thrown incomplete. Now, Kevin Simon. Uh, here, here's, here's my question. Did not get the ball back across the line of scrimmage. He was outside the five-yard a lot of people say the tackle box, but it's actually five yards outside the center. I think because Kevin Simon hit him when he was throwing the ball, there was no call. Third down. The line to make the Tennessee 21.
Tennessee shows blitz, and here they come again. And the pass, middle screen, is caught by Thomas, and he was just trying to make sure that he was safe, and he caught the ball as he headed down to the ground. Well, John Chavis is bringing the kitchen sink here. He's bringing them all. Had a good call, but Pinkins didn't have enough time to really no. throw that and set it up. And then Matthew Thomas, as I said, just had to dive, make sure that he secured the football and that it didn't get picked off by Tennessee. Too long for a field goal. South Carolina will go for it. Fourth down. The 21-yard line is where they need to take it. Trying to draw them offside, figuring they were going to come on the blitz. Tried to draw him outside and he got the delay of game penalty. It's getting ready to say if you try that and don't make it, you give up the opportunity to punt the ball inside the 10 yard line. If you can do that, make Tennessee go the long way. Philip Fulmer said yesterday, dangerous team. My team thinks that I'm giving them coaches talk, but a dangerous team and a dangerous time for us to be playing him, even though it is at home. And it is proving to be exactly what he said. And I think the players knew they were going to be in a battle. South Carolina's taking it to Tennessee and they're in the running game. And defensive line wise, holding their own. Gets a low pass, here's the kick. Trying to get that uh, top spin, and he does, and it, he's going to go out of bounds at the eight-yard line. Joey Bowers with a great job for the Gamecocks. 30 yards and a kick, but he pins Tennessee deep. Right back. Welcome back to Neyland Stadium. We have 8.04 to play in the ball game, tied at 17 apiece. And following that beautiful punt by South Carolina, Tennessee starts with their worst field position of the night. Cedric Houston, you can see number 21, comes back into the ball game at tailback. But something to show you at the conclusion of this play right here that I think you will enjoy seeing. If you're a South Carolina fan, anyway. Houston, right at the middle. Oh, it's a good fake, and the ball thrown low and incomplete at the 10-yard line. Well. The Tennessee fans booed on the call up for defensive pass interference, and this is an angle we didn't have. Look at this. Great job, guys. That's the reason he was flagged, because when that jersey blouses like that, every time it's going to get a marker, by right? You should apologize to that official. <laughs> Me? I didn't see anything. I, I think I questioned that call, and I I said I didn't see it, and I didn't see it till just now, so well, I anyway, apologize. Our guys, uh, our guys always get the good close looks, and that proves right there that that's exactly the reason that flag was thrown. Houston, nothing in the middle, tries to bounce it outside on the right, he's going to be hit, and that is Island. DeAndre Island came in and replaced Ted Crawford because Crawford was getting picked on a little bit, Island has had a very good ball game. Yeah, Chris Kosh's defense in the second half has dominated Tennessee. They don't have any rhythm. You don't feel good if you're... A, a, the crowd right now doesn't feel good about anything Tennessee's doing on offense because nothing's working, but that's because South Carolina's playing such good defense. Well, it's third down if Tennessee needs to take this ball all the way out to the 18-yard line. Here's the quick screen. Got it out to Jones, and with blockers in front, put his head down is going to be short of the first down as he takes it to the 17-yard line. Jermaine Harris put a stop on him. Boy, what an effort by Mark Jones to try to pick up the first down. I mean, he roared up there. Gets a quick screen, gets a couple good blocks, and lowers his headgear to try to pick up that first down. Goss with a great tackle. Oh, Colquitt has been a lot of the story here in the second half as he's knocked a couple out of bounds inside the two-yard line, but right now he needs to have his best effort of the ball game to help out the Volunteers. Waits for the snap at the four. Here's his kick, and it is a booming driving spiral. 
Summers all the way back, fumbles the ball at the 26, and is hit immediately, and is hit again, and is going to be stopped way back at the 21-yard line. He is so fortunate he held on to that football, 46 on the punt, and a loss of six on the return. I don't know who's going to win this football game, but Copeland right now is the story in this football game. We'll take a break. Stied at 17, just over six minutes to play. And we are back, and uh, take a look there. Dr. Punch, what do you have for us? Game's so oh, good, he's, he's taking time off. <laughs> he and his wife, Joni. Busman's holiday. South Carolina with the first down at their own 21. It's just going to be a quarterback keeper. And Pinkins will take it out across the 25 to around the 26-yard line. This has been such a well-played second half. Nobody's given up an inch, and uh, somebody's going to catch a break in this game. That's exactly and, uh, what just, I was going to uh, say. A fumble or something's going to happen to swing this football game. Big play, either offensively or by a defensive person. Second down, they need to take it to the 31. They creep those linebackers up. Here comes Summers. Breaks the first tackle, and now he's going to be gang tackled, but he's close to the first down as he crosses the 30. Burnett was the man who finally stopped it. Kevin Burnett, second in tackles for this Tennessee defense. And they're going to bring the chains in from across the way. And for people watching this ball game tonight, particularly other coaches that have got to play South Carolina, you see that missed tackle right there? This guy really has the ability to, to make that happen. And I'm sure there's some defensive coordinators sitting there saying, wow, what are we going to do to stop this fella? Not going to have it, but uh, less than a half yard. Third and one. Luke keeps pacing. John Chavis on the surface. Looking calm, but I can promise you, underneath that windbreaker, he's not. He knows what they're confronted with right here. With a third down and just about a foot, they need a stop. Clock is down to five minutes and 22 seconds, and it's being whistled back in right now. Quarterback Snake, he'll have the first down easily. When your quarterback weighs about 250 pounds, that is a really good play. Ritzman makes the tackle. And you're going to get a heavy dose of Demetrius Summers uh, on this series for South Carolina. South Carolina has all three of their timeouts, so the pace of the second half has been good for them. And now we go under five minutes to play in our ball game. We're tied at 17. Again, Tennessee shows blitz. They come up the middle, and a pass deep is knocked away and incomplete as the safety came over to help. And Rashad Baker is uh, shaken up in the play a little bit. Incomplete. Troy Williamson, good sportsmanship there as he waits before going back to the huddle to check on Baker to help pick him up. Ron, even the freshman running back, we've seen him run the football tonight. He gets a good block here. Watch number 31, Demetrius Summers, picks up the linebacker blitzing or Richmond, the defensive end, and doesn't allow him to get this pickings. And Juan Stewart, the quarterback, is the one who fell down across uh, Baker. That's what shook him up a little bit there. Right up the middle, big opening, has five, has ten, counted off at 12 yards. And Gray got a huge opening. A little bit of a surprise. First time that, that we have seen him. And I mean fresh legs, and he came with a big burst right up the middle. First and down to Gamecock. Wharton, give uh, Trevell Wharton credit for a very good block. And on the sideline, Summer's getting a breather. He may have been shaken up a little bit. Let's we'll see how long he stays out of action. They got the end. No, they don't. A great receiver over this side. So. Gonzi Gray, six foot one eighty six, a junior out of Waldorf, Maryland. Short yardage on this one, and will uh, be tackled at the line of scrimmage by Harrelson. Now this clock really becoming important. 
And, of course, you look at the situation with South Carolina. They have had problems, although he kicked a field goal tonight. But what are the limits that the South Carolina staff would put on him as far as the distance that they would try, Mike? Depends on the situation. I, I think where you get run the clock down 25-yard line, something like that, I think they've tried. And Summers is not in the football game right now. He may be tired. So they figure they're going to throw the football here. Well, he's going to use a timeout. So let's take a break. 335 remaining. Tied at 17. So we're back. Time is in. Three minutes, 35 seconds left in our ball game. Tied at 17. Second down and 10 South Carolina from their own 45. Looking incomplete pass intended for Thomas. Matthew Thomas covered closely by Jabari Greer. Ron, I believe Summers is hurt, and that's why they're going to a passing formation. Uh, he looked as though he was limping just a little bit on the sideline. If you're Tennessee's defense, you better know where Trey Williamson is on this play. And, and Terman is leaving yeah. the field. He's injured. So two running backs unable to perform at uh, the most important time of the game for the Gamecocks. Third down and ten. Sets deep in the pocket. Going to throw this one long. Far sideline. And it is caught by Goodman. And a flag comes down. He caught it at the 31-yard line. And Mark Jones is the man who had the cover. Boy, what a great catch. 24 yards on the reception. Going to come back. Yeah, there's a push on Mark Jones by Goodman. And both officials over there saw it and made the call and threw the flag. Blue uh, with a new record toss of his uh, South Carolina baseball cap. Wow. Yeah, he was a little chapped, and I can understand. <laughs> Penalty pushes it back to the 30-yard line. Now they got to reach the Tennessee 45. <laughs> This is one you may just hear out here, Ron. Or a quarterback draw. Blitz coming right up the middle. They pick it up. And the pass is almost intercepted by Stewart. Kevin Burnett was the man who was coming right up the middle, applying the pressure. Well, Kevin Burnett has had a great night on defense. Putting pressure on Dondrell Pinkins. Number two. Now the punt, which has been a, uh, a mystery. Jabari Levy, number 78, credit him with just enough of a block on the man coming up the middle. Otherwise, they may have gotten to the quarterback. Josh Brown will punt this one. And here's the kick. He's the straightaway conventional kicker. Very high spiral, and a fair catch is called for and made at the 33. Coming up next on ESPN, a sports center with John Anderson and Scott Van Pelt, Wild Day at Wrigley, and Blitzo handled Eagles Blitz and college football top 10 plays. Stay tuned for ESPN News Extra for both teams' press conference. Now, did the Cubs win it? I've been here at the ballpark. I don't have any. I think they, they won did. both games today, so uh, Dusty Baker's. Heading for the playoffs. Well, it's been confirmed. They did. Here comes Tennessee. First down. We have two minutes, 49 seconds showing on the clock. Cedric Houston in a very deep eye set at the 25. He gets the pitch. And nothing doing going to be hit. And George Gauze again with a great defensive play. Reese Davis, what do you have? Well, Ron Marshall, after that great upset of Kansas State last week, taking on Troy State and down 33-24 when Derek Ansley picks it off for the Trojans and Marshall can't follow it up. Blakeney's team wins it 33-24. Wow. A lot of goalposts going down early in the season. 
intelligent. Kansas today. Mark Mangino with a big win on Florida. A lot of points. We're about to go under two minutes in this one. Tennessee uh, kind of taking their time coming to the line of scrimmage with the second down and long. Here comes a blitz off the corner. They throw the screen. And the tackle made at the 40 by James Banks, and he was one guy away from breaking it big time, but it was Dante Robinson who came over to make the stop on him. Ron, James Banks is a leading receiver on this football team. Now Tennessee faced with a tough third down situation. You see his second half, 31 yards for Casey Clawson. You've got to give South Carolina credit for the uh, adjustments that they made at halftime. Third down, they need the 43-yard line. Troy Fleming, the lone setback for Tennessee. He picks up the blitz and the pass from behind the receiver at the 45-yard line, and it was tipped by Marcus Lawrence. Well, we're setting for uh, heading for overtime right here. Now, a lot of football to be played with 116, but if Colquitt does his job like he's been doing it, then Lou Holtz has a question to ask. Does he try to get it out of there, or does he play for overtime? Seventh punt of the night by Tennessee. And Dante Robinson is the man that they have put back deep since Summers is not available. High, high kick. Spiral's going to turn over at the 10, and it is going to take a big Tennessee bounce and go dead inside the five-yard line. 4.9 on the hang time. Is that great kicking or what? 56 yards the distance. This young man's put on a show. Oh, he's, he? he's been the most important frog in this Tennessee uh, team. But now with Tennessee only having one timeout, now, again, Lou Holtz has to decide right now, safe handoffs, and uh, I'd say go to overtime. Well, the... If we do go to overtime, the difficult thing, how many healthy running backs is he going to have? And he just answered one of those questions because Demetrius Summers has come back into the lineup. And they give him the ball, and he's going to be hit by Robert Peace right at the line of scrimmage. Maybe a gain of a half yard, and that's it. Here's where Tennessee would like to have their two timeouts back to force uh, South Carolina to eventually punt. But the way this situation is going, we're headed for the extra period. Well, we had six of them here last year when uh, Arkansas came to town. Started that game at 7.45 <laughs> Eastern. It ended after midnight. You remember well. <laughs> Clock running, 25, now 24. Again, turns and hands it off to Summers. And there, uh, Mike, he, uh, he is a Kemper. step slow. Yep, he's yep. gippy. Robert Peace again making the tackle and looks like that's going to be the final play of uh, regulation time here before we go to overtime. Five seconds, four, down to three. A reminder that as soon as we're done here in Knoxville, Sports Center is next, but we're going to overtime as the clock shows double zeros in Tennessee and South Carolina all knotted up at 17 apiece. So let's take a timeout. When we come back, We'll have the coin flip and see who can get this Southeastern Conference East Division win. So we're back. Neyland Stadium in Knoxville, Tennessee. Doyle Jackson about to flip the coin as the captains come out. And a quick glance at the rules. Coin toss for uh, choice of offense, defense, uh, or end of the field. Oh, oh, here you go. Oh, all right. I'm going to toss this thing. There's fails, and there's heads. If I drop it, I don't understand. We'll go in. So are you ready? I heard tails, heads it is. You have won the toss, and you're going to have to make a decision this way. All right, he's going on defense. You guys are going to have to be on offense. Which end do you want to play on? All right, you're going to play on that end right down there? Okay. South Carolina has selected the south end. All righty, so... Uh, South Carolina goes on offense first, and uh, they will scrimmage actually toward the noisiest end of the stadium. They got more fans at the other end. 
But uh, Michael, no, talk I about strategy and why uh, everybody wants to go on defense well, after they win the toss. You always want to know what you got to have. And uh, South Carolina chose their side where their band's at because they figured their band may be able to cause some problems when Tennessee comes on offense. But uh, Tennessee winning the choice goes on defense right away. You know something? I was watching from the shot down on the field. You're exactly right. He did choose the end of the field. Yeah, he that, chose uh, the right where side. Where they, uh, South Carolina band and all their fans right there. Yeah. Now, here's the situation. As South Carolina comes out, we prepare for overtime. The biggest weapon of the night, you can't use him in overtime. And that's Dustin Coldwood oh, for Tennessee. Right. That's a good point. Fourth overtime game today so far. And Summers comes in at tailback. And he's dropped out about eight yards behind the line of scrimmage. And hit from behind. Will not have an opportunity to pitch Harrelson on the defensive play. And were they going to flip it? I think they were going to have the reverse. They were going to start the overtime period with a reverse. Try to catch Tennessee sleeping. But Paris Harrelson said, I'm awake. And made the tackle. I'll tell Kevin you what, Burnett was roaring up the field, too. Kevin Burnett was there to intercept that toss if it had occurred. It's almost like they were in the uh, backfield. Huddle. Second down, South Carolina. Gray is coming to tailback for South Carolina. Tennessee shows blitz, and here they come. Pumps it once, going to go long for the end zone. Got him there, and the ball is knocked away, and here come three flags. Jabari Greer trying to make the cover on Williamson. Williamson was wide open. And Jabari Greer had to get back there and uh, interfered. Pass and appearance, Tennessee. Boy, he really had gotten behind him. And you tell your receiver when that happens, kind of pull up a little bit and let the defender run you over. And that's exactly what happened. Of course, we don't we don't have face masking anymore, but the contact was made there, and that's the reason for the three flags. So Jabari Greer is flagged. It'll be a first down South Carolina. And the new line of scrimmage is the 14 of Tennessee. If you just joined us, we're in overtime. And as soon as we're done here in Knoxville, it is Sports Center. Summers back into the line at the tailback. Summers gets the handoff. Hit at the line of scrimmage. Now knocked down. And I think they whistled the play dead, didn't they? Or did they? Yeah, Summers would like to whistle it a little sooner. So he didn't have yeah. to take that hit. Ball start, South Carolina. Summers does not look like the back we've seen all night. No. And you see Lou standing there hollering, who? And he's coming out. Got to come out, and that means that the Gray will check back into the lineup. And Terman also hurt, so down to third back. So for Summers, 27 carries, 156 yards. Dunsey Gray will be the tailback. Blitz off the corner. Here comes the pressure, and they collide as the ball is complete, and Gray still fighting his way forward. Goes down at around the 16-yard line. Boy, Pinkins did a great job in the face of the blitz. Dondrell Pinkins is going to get this ball. Kevin Simon coming pell-mell at him. Boy, he, gets the, uh, he is so off. big and strong. Pinkins, the uh, the quarterback, you see he got sandwiched and they still couldn't knock him down. Second down. They roll the pocket. Looking, still looking, and the pass just thrown away. Good hit by Richmond on Pinkins. Constantine Richmond uh, applying the pressure, and he, he knocked him down with a solid lift. So now it's third down. And your, your running back is coming back into the game, Demetrius Summers, but uh, doesn't look like what we've seen. Still has a little limp. 
may be coming back more as a camouflage back here. So it's third down. They need to take it just inside the five-yard line to pick up the first down. Right guard moved again, so they're going to get another five-yard penalty. Jonathan Alston. That was a dead ball. Movement of the offensive lineman prior to the snap. Then they five yards from the previous spot. Still third down. Ron, you mentioned Jonathan Alston. He's going to move the right guard. He's just yeah, a little movement there. And it looked like uh, Goddard as well. Third down. They might throw the fade right here. Here comes pressure up the middle. Goes to the far side, and the ball is caught. And it's going to be short of the first down. It's Demetrius Summers. They had circled out of the backfield. So let's see. The ball is going to be spotted down at the six-and-a-half-yard line. We are out, Ron. What did, did, did with uh, Williamson has brought him inside and brought Summers out against the boundary. He's going to come outside. He runs inside. And now you got him against Kevin Burnett, the linebacker. He makes a great catch, concentration, and then Tennessee defenders keep him from getting that first down. Kevin did not do a good job of ball identification or watch his eyes, so this is a 24-yard attempt to try to score first in overtime. Daniel Weaver, good pass. Ball is down, and the kick is good. So Weaver has converted on both the tips tonight and in the first overtime South Carolina goes on top by a score of 20 to 17. We all know the rules. It means now that Tennessee either has to kick a field goal or score a touchdown. A field goal to maintain an even status and go to a second overtime or score a touchdown and they could win it. Casey Clawson now you expect your best players to make big plays in over overtime. Casey Clawson, all the pressures on his shoulders. So the Tennessee offense off the sideline and out on the field quickly. Tonight, our player of the game is brought to you by Russell Material, and it is Summers for South Carolina with 158 yards, and Dustin Colquitt for Tennessee. What a night the youngster had, four inside the 23, inside the five-yard line. Clawson now with an audible. Houston gets the ball. Pretty good opening on the left side. Takes it in the vicinity of the 20. Mo Thompson defensively. It looked like Cedric Houston may have broken that play inside a little bit more. He would have had more. Looks like in here would have been more. But he stayed outside. He missed the hole. Missed a big play. Second down for the Volunteers. Houston again will take it right at the middle. Cuts this one to the outside. Gets by a tackle. Has the first down, and he's out of bounds at the 11-yard line. Ten yards of the carry. Now, the plot thickens because Tennessee, obviously, if they take it into the end zone, they come away with an overtime victory, and South Carolina knows they got to keep them out of the checkerboards to our left. Yeah, the plot's over. They get in the end zone. Cedric Houston reminds me of Craig Hayward. I have at Pittsburgh. That's the way he runs the football. First and 10, Tennessee. He gets it again. Bounces this one to the outside. And a good job defensively. George Goss has uh, been... Steady Eddie tonight. He has played a really good ball game. Coming can't, over to make the stop, he's got eight tackles officially. Can't bounce everything outside. Uh, Cedric Houston trying to get to that left corner. Michael Munoz, number 77, breaks the huddle with his teammate. Scott Wells comes out over the football as you look at Cedric Houston, the junior out of Clarendon, Arkansas. He gets the ball, cuts it back up into the middle. At the five, he's down to the four. It'll be third down, Tennessee. Marcus Lawrence came up with the big hit. 
Now, Ron, he made the cut inside here. He's going to take it inside. Breaks outside. Now he goes inside and picks up valuable yardage. Marcus Lawrence, who was a junior college All-American, played at Butler Community College. And South Carolina has a player shaken up. He showed really good, quick uh, reaction right there to make that hit, and it's Gauze who was down. That's Buco Juco, <laughs> Butler County in Kansas. Sports Center coming up next, immediately following our overtime. Well, actually, we said Gauze, but it's not. I believe it's Garrison, I believe. No. Now, Sports Center, John Anderson and Scott Van Pelt standing by. Wild day at Wigley. Can Bledsoe handle the Eagles blitz in college football? Top 10 plays. And it is uh, George Goss who is uh, shaken up on the play, and he's being helped off. In both press conferences from uh, from this game right here. We're in our first overtime. It is 20 to 17 South Carolina. Now it's Tennessee's turn, and folks, they got a third down. They need three and a half yards. Ron, if, if I was Tennessee right now, I'd go right on the left side behind Michael Munoz right here where Goss is going, right there. The left side, either sweep or run inside. Well, let's see if they go that direction. Clawson now with what appears to be an audible. Fleming, the fullback, turns around and tells Cedric Houston what the change is. And it's a fade route, far sideline. It is caught there. The touchdown. Tennessee wins in overtime. Hello, James Banks. And let's go down to the sideline. Adrian Karsten. you tell other teams? How would you coach other teams to stop Demetrius Sumner? He's a heck of a back. There's no question about that. I don't think we tackled very well. I don't think we did anything very well tonight. I am darn glad to get a win. Was Dustin Cole quick your MVP tonight? No question. No question. Turn the field over time after time. Enjoy it, Coach. Casey Claus and Ron checked off and threw the fade to James Bank and Banks and you, the senior quarterback made the call at the line of scrimmage, the biggest play of the night. And Mike, look who they won against. They picked on the best defensive back that the Gamecocks have, and Robertson is just absolutely outstanding, but that shows that Banks is very tough to cover and has great leaping ability, and Lou is sick over the yeah. situation. Heartbreaking loss for South Carolina. So our final score, it is Tennessee 23 to 20 in overtime. Coming up next on ESPN at Sports Center and over on ESPN News, it's both teams' press conferences. For more, log on to ESPN.com, your home for college football on the internet. Now for Mike Godfrey, Adrian Karsten, and our entire crew, I'm Ron Franklin. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Good night, everybody, from Knoxville, Tennessee.